and again welcome you all to National Youth Conference 2022. Jay Hansen Brown had once said, "Opportunity dances with those who are already on the dance floor." Yes. So today we all have gathered here from various parts of the country to enter this dance floor to know more about the good governance and to grab this opportunity. So on this glorious occasion. It is a proud privilege to welcome our inaugurator, Shrimati Ratna Prabha Ma, IAS, former Chief Secretary of Government of Karnataka and Founder President of Ubuntu Consortium, the Chief Guest Shrimati Ruchi Ghanasha, retired IFS, former High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, and the President of the event, Mr. Murali Krishna, Vice Principal, Dr. Shrisha Bhatt, Managing Director, Akanksha Charitable Trust, to welcome the gathering. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's really great to have this NYC Penny Penny Two in the tenth year of our organization because we are celebrating tenth year of our Kamsha. So we started in the year 2012, and uh, we started with just 11 people, and now we have more than 200 plus volunteers. And you know, the important uh, part of our organization is we don't have. any uh, employees for our organization we, you can see all the volunteers we are working for one or the other um, you know institutions or, or as a doctor or as an engineer or as a professor so we all you know join together for a common cause to you know make this society a better uh, so in this regard uh, we thought so you know actually we organized a national youth conference 2020 um in the same venue but due to covid we organized nic 2021 online mode and we are organizing third national youth conference here and uh, the main purpose of conducting this particular um, youth conference so uh, we started this process in august july so uh, we started this process in august july and uh, talking about our guest uh, you know both of them uh, have achieved a lot in their life and you know uh, we don't have very big contacts i just wanted to tell about their simplicity uh, i just tweeted from our akanksha trust account saying like we are conducting this particular event we wanted to have you as a speaker so immediately they sent uh, you know message to uh, inbox and then you know uh, i met ratna prabha ma'am personally and we invited her and she agreed i think we met in the august um, and then uh, she agreed uh, to be part of this national youth conference and um, on behalf of all the delegates and all the you know organizers of this national youth conference we heartily welcome you to this conference ma'am heartily welcome you We have uh, Ms. Uh, Ruchi Ganeshyam, former High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, and uh, again we also tweeted her uh, saying, uh, "Ma'am, uh, we are these kind of, you know, we are doing these kind of activities. We want your support, and please, you know, come to our program." Actually, she had conducted uh, two sessions online uh, during the COVID time, and uh, again in August or September, I asked her to come. and she you know immediately agreed and the important thing is we never met before and we don't have any common contacts as well so but only because she uh, you know liked our idea and liked our purpose and that's why she is here and it's really great to have you here ma'am a hearty welcome to you ma'am Uh, we have Dr. Murli Krishna sir. He is the Vice Principal of Saint Aloysius Peer College, and I you know we we are always thankful to Saint Aloysius Peer College because they are giving us venue to conduct this particular program, and also they are assisting in all the ways, and they have given you know the best help to our uh, organization. So I would like to thank uh, the institution, and I heartily welcome uh, Murli Krishna sir for this particular program. Welcome, sir. we have uh, the delegates from various places uh, it's really nice to have you because we conducted two pre conference meet before virtually because hackathon is kind of a tough 
office job, we, we will have to you know interact with each other. So we have conducted several meetings before and we created separate WhatsApp group and we have done a lot of work and also I know that you have you know traveled from many places and it's really nice to have you and we'll be together for two days and of course in the coming days as well. So I heartily welcome you to all the delegates for this particular program. Uh, welcome to one and uh, each and every one. And I also welcome all the members of ACT uh, for this particular program. And also I welcome all the you know technical and the media persons for this program. And I thank for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome to you too, Dr. Shrishabhat. So you are the one uh, who stand as a backbone for all the events that we conduct as a team. So thank you and welcome to you too for this event. Now we'll proceed, we'll proceed the inaugural function and I request all the delegates to inaugurate the, inaugurate the program by enlightening the land. Where one need to really think of 
you know, what exactly has been spoken to you. Because uh, we've been also gone through colleges and all that. And whenever there are uh, speeches or programs, normally we try to bunk in, in college. But here, I'm sure the youth who have come here have not been just asked to come. You are all a selected group who are really very conscious of what is happening and have, are participating in this conference because you are looking forward to be being the change makers in the government and in society. So what is governance? You know, because I don't want to go bore you with theories and on what is governance. But so I made a very small, uh, you know, simple sentence. Governance is nothing but administration of a state and how the systems in the welfare state are to be put in place to reach to the maximum number of people, giving them good services at their doorstep. That could be good governance. There are many definitions. Then good governance, how does it happen? It depends on the political and the social institutions, the processes, the outcomes, and the ideas that are con conceived to achieve the goals of the government. Now the five principles of good governance are, first of all, of course, responsibility and discipline, accountability, you have to be accountable to the people to whom you are governing, Aware, awareness, people have to be aware of what you are doing, impartiality, that is very, very important, you have to be impartial in your decision making and impartial in what you are doing and then transparency, you have to be transparent, people should know what you are doing. So all these are some principles of good governance and any government which comes close to these principles can be termed as a government with good governance. Now what is youth? You are all youth. So youth, when you Google and you see, nowadays Google is the best dictionary, you know. We never had that facility when we were students. So whatever you want to know now, what if you are sitting there, you want to know what is Ratna Prabha, you Google, you will come to know. You will know what is Ruchi, you Google, you know what all we have done, what we are, uh, what we have done in life. So youth, you know, is defined as the age between childhood and adulthood. You are in between. And the UN describes youth as the age between 15 to 24. In some countries, especially in India, youth is up to 40 years. So all of you sitting here are youth who are generally, youth means you are attributed to youngsters, young people who are, you know, very enthusiastic, full of energy, vigor, and innovative ideas. And you can be molded for nation building. Really, the youth can be the, uh, you know, you can be molded for nation, agents for nation building. So, you have a very burning belly, you know, you want to do something in life. Now, for us, you know, if you look at uh, something which is history, very close to history, is our independence struggle. We don't have to go back to some old uh, stories. And you have seen in the independent struggle how many youngsters who are unnamed, you know, some people named, some people you know, but unknown several youth have participated in the freedom struggle, fought for the freedom of our country, and that is how India became an independent country in 1947. So there are several examples where the youth when they have the passion and when they have the desire to bring about a change, you can achieve it. And as I said, one of the most closest examples is our independence struggle. So now since uh, I have to speak on the role of youth in governance, I just thought being an administrator uh, to divide my speech into four or five categories. The role of youth in administration, along with civil society, like they have youth in politics, youth in judiciary, youth in uh, the press, that is the fourth estate. And of course, when you talk of ad uh, administration, I also talk of army, navy, and air force, etc., etc. So in modern times, as you know, 
there is a lot of expectations from the people. People expect a lot from the government. And because of various modes of information, whether it is press, print and electronic media, the social media, the WhatsApp messages, the various, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Insta, etc., etc., lot of information is available at the doorstep to everyone, which was not there once upon a time. So with this kind of information available, there's a lot of pressure on the government to perform and reach out to the people. And there's a lot of pressure from the opposition parties also on the government when they don't perform. But yet, what are we seeing? Lot of expectations, lot of dreams remain unrealized. Let me quote an example of my own posting when I was estate commissioner Vidar in 1983-85 was the last father of Karnataka. No lady officer was posted there. So when I went there, people used to look uh, at me with different, you know, some new lady, young girl has come here. And the only mode of communication in that district at that time was a wireless message from the police. You should can use the police control room to send a wireless message. The second thing was a trunk call. I'm sure all of you are not aware of trunk calls. You know, you have those big black telephones. Have you seen them in some of you? The telephone, the big telephone department, black instrument. Now in many houses, we don't even have telephones because everybody is using a mobile. So that used to be a big telephone you to dial and very difficult to reach out. And suppose I need to reach out to Tasilda, Bhalki or Tasilda, Basar Kalyan, I book a call. And uh, in the evening, when I return back home, that uh, lady would say, Madam, you turn call Madi Vilala, Basar Kalyan ke. Line has not been reached, or Tasildar Bhalki is on the or Basar Kalyan is on the line after 12 hours or something. Meanwhile, we would have communicated through a wireless message that this is an urgent situation, there's a law and order situation there, there's a drinking water problem there, or students in some hostel have not received the food, there is some agitation. So that was the kind of communication which we, it used to be there. And we used to function under such communication because, and we were very free. Then I asked her, she said she did. Yeah. So that used to be the kind of communication and that is the kind of conditions we have worked with. No roads, no drinking water, you know, no people used to draw water from the well and during our time, first time the gold well came into existence, kids were not going to school, malnutrition, etc. etc. So from that to now, after 40 years, so much has developed. I'm not saying development hasn't taken place, so much has developed. But because of the expectations and comparisons with other countries, we need to do more. And that is how I feel the role of youth in the administration is very, very important. I think many of the youngsters still in Karnataka and rest of India, many of you really do join the civil services, but still you have a lot of scope to write the examination, join the government, and bring about that change. Now, Madam was in foreign service. She was just uh, sharing how she dealt with so many issues, the Kargil war, etc., etc., and Islamabad when she was there. And maybe she'll share many of her experiences. Now, this wouldn't have happened if she hadn't joined the government. So similarly, many of you, when you see things from outside, suppose you are from Mangalore, you are from Puttur, or any part of the country, you see the road, you see the water <coughs> drainage, uncovered drainage, or you see the flooding of the road, or you see houses collapsing during the big rainfall because this area, you have a lot of rainfall happening. Don't you feel there is something 
that could be done. Why the administration is not doing this? Why the administration is not reaching out? There are a lot of scams happening in recruitment. You see so many recruitment scams happening. You are writing an exam with great expectation that you'll become somebody. And then you see the scam and you feel, why this is happening? And you are outside and you are only able to feel and you are able to criticize. But why don't you join the system? Why don't you think of joining the system and say, yeah, I'll be there, I'll be a sincere person. I'll ensure that good things happen to the people. There are so many things where you people could join the administration at different levels. You can be a tasildar, you can be a BDO, you can be an engineer, you can be a forest officer, you can be a surveyor, you can be anything. But once you are within, within in the government, definitely a lot of good things can be done. There can be a change. And because if you carry on your principles, you carry on with your honesty, you carry on with your sincerity, you will definitely make a change in the hearts and minds of the people. So many things can be done by the youth. So along with this, I also talk about the role of uh, the social, uh, I mean the civil society like uh, Professor. I heard he was working with the uh, Dakshin Kannada District Administration to bring about a lot of changes in the system and I'm sure he'll share his experiences that when he joined the administration, what he delivered was much better than what uh, some uh, government uh, officer and employee could deliver. Because once you have the urge and the zeal to reach out to people, definitely a lot of things can be done. Because I I found in the many of my experiences working with the youth, I, I'll just share one or two examples, recent examples. There was COVID, you know, COVID struck the entire world, entire country. And there were so many people panicking. Somebody was dying somewhere, somebody wanted oxygen, somebody needed that remittance injection, somebody had that black fungus. And the uh, administration was not able to reach out. People were calling ambulances, blah, blah, so many, you know, these kind of socially conscious organizations. I had retired, but because of my reputation, they kept calling me till middle of the night, sometimes till 2 o'clock for an Indian gentleman to shift him to the hospital, talking to various people. You know, you get a lot of pleasure. You like, get a lot of pleasure that uh, you could help somebody to some family to save the life of one person in the family. I'm sure all of you will feel it. And I always feel that working for the people gives you more pleasure than the people who receive the help from you. When you see a spy on some place where you feel much more happier that uh, you have done something good for that person. It gives a sense of joy and happiness and satisfaction to you. So COVID was one of the uh, area where a lot of youth associations, etc. they were working. I mean, whatever you did was not enough. That was the situation. Especially the second phase was so bad that whatever one did, the government did, social, civil societies did, youth did, that was not enough. But I'm sure you know, uh, so many of us working, we could save some lives. And this is an area where always if you're part of an administration, you're part of a health department, you're part of an education department, anyway, you could do a great deal. And uh, I, I want to quote another two examples. When I was in to DC, the youth association, local youth association came to me and told me that there was this system of Devadasis prevailing in Raichur in 1991. And when I talked to the women and child department, they said, no, 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 but Devadasi Leela, Raichur and Leela, it's only in Bijapur and Belgaum. Whereas these boys and girls said, no, they are there, we'll show you. And I sent my officers along with these boys and they went to the different parts of the talukas. We could identify 9,000 devdasis. It wouldn't have happened without the support of the youth associations there. We got, uh, we identified 9,000, maybe there are more. And then I took up a program in rehabilitating them, giving them lands, giving them jobs as anandwadi workers, you know, and, uh, attenders in the office, whatever was in my capacity. And a lot of them I gave them land because land would give them a social status to the women who are into this system. So if the youth association hadn't come and told me, I wouldn't have known, so many DCs had come and gone and nobody would have known that this Devdasi system was there. Even now, some of those Devdasi's grandchildren, they call me and say because of the land allotted, you know, my mother and my grandmother could leave the profession to cultivate the land 
and become responsible citizens in the district. Similarly, we have a literacy campaign. All of you must be aware. Sakshata Andolana, it is a huge literacy campaign. Campaign. It just won't be done. Government of India uh, asked the deputy commissioners to take all the youth and all the educated people. One literate should educate ten literate in the village. It was a massive campaign. All over we used to go together with youth, the women, officers, politicians, everybody we used to go to the villages and distribute books, make them to study. And the literacy level of Raichur, I don't know, from 8% or 9%, it went up to some 70-80%. And now in North Karnataka, because of these campaigns, the literacy levels have really gone up. So I can quote several examples. So what I want to say is the youth, all of you, either get into the government, or like him, uh, work with the civil society, do something for the people, definitely you can be the change maker. You should be within the system rather than being outside the system, that's what I would like to say. Now the second thing which is very important is politics. Okay, politics is an area I think the youth can play, play a major role because due to play, play, pressure of studies, generally students keep themselves away from politics. And uh, you know, there is so much of pressure from the parents to perform and to get a good job and go to uh, go abroad, uh, join an IT company or join, join some company and have a relaxed life. Many of the youth, though they're in colleges, some of them are, you know, president of the college union, secretary of the college union, they participate in several, uh, you know, events in the college. But once they pass out, all of them, you know, want to lead a very settled life. And that is where the problem lies, that as youth, as youngsters, you have a lot of passion, a lot of hope, and a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of innovative ideas that you want to do something. But once you sort of uh, get a job, get married, then politics is not my cup of tea. I should become an engineer, doctor, I should work in one big company, good hospital, or go abroad, blah, blah. Why not? Now, suppose you are talking of the five levels. You have the Gram Panchayat. You have uh, at the village level, the Gram Panchayat. Lot of people come from the villages. You think that Adhyaksha of Gram Panchayat should be an uneducated, illiterate person. But government of India sends so much of money directly to the Gram Panchayat. And suppose you, in your Gram Panchayat, contest for election and become an Adhyaksha. You can change the entire village into a modern village. Because you are educated, you have passion, you have ideas, you don't want to be corrupt, you don't want to make money, only the welfare of that uh, Gram Panchayat is your goal. Now there is this lady, one interesting lady called Chavi, Ch Chavi Rajavar from Rajasthan. She was an MBA in Jaipur, her father came from that one particular village. After she finished her MBA, joined an IT company, went abroad, she got frustrated. She thought, for whom am I working? I'm working for some other company to make money. I'm only getting a salary, but some company CEO, you know, he's making money. We feel very happy I'm working in Infosys, Wipro, uh, TCS. But for whom are you working? You're working for Infosys to make money, you're working for Wipro to make money. But what is the pleasure you gain by getting a 40, 50 or a 1 lakh salary? You don't get any pleasure. You are only going in the morning and working like a robber, just feeling something into the systems and coming back. So she decided to come back and contest the Gram Panchayat election in her village. And when she came back and she was uh, contesting, you know, it's a, Rastan is a very feudal state. And the ex-Adyaksha, he couldn't uh, say, what, what is young girl and come, coming and contesting against me? And all the men said, who are you? For girl, you want to contest against all of us, we are there in Gram Panchayat for many years. She talked to everybody, she went from home to home, she talked to all the women, she said, this is what is the state of the village, in spite of independence, give me a chance, I will show you the difference. And they all voted for her. And still now, she is still the Panchayat uh, head. And she's brought about a total change in her village because of her education, because of her uh, commitment, and she is now appearing on the world global map, goes to various seminars, etc., and speaks how she brought about the change. So it's very important that you know the youth think that we should be part of the change. Similarly, you have the Talka Panchayat, you have the Jilla Panchayat, now coming to the MLA and the MP election. Okay. 
All of us think that's not a cup of tea. Somebody else contests, somebody becomes MLA, somebody becomes MP. And then you feel like a shy to Yenu Madilla, Puna election Bantu, Puna Yaro, Puna Puna Yenu Abila. You're always outside. Okay. Why don't you think of getting in and fighting on? Of course, it's not so easy. I was uh, remembering, uh, I don't know whether you have seen political, what is that, Nagraj, uh, what is that movie? Polit uh, humble Politician Nagraj. I don't know how many of you have seen the Humble Politician Nagraj, who has all the crooked ways of winning the election. And there is this young boy who comes from uh, US called Arun Patil. And he says, I want to change the system, I want to change the municipality. Why there is so much of corruption in this municipality? And he tries to contest election against this humble politician who is always, though he is very humble, he is a very crooked fellow, knows how to win the elections. And this Arun Patel thinks he is going to win the election because he is good, he is committed, he is honest, sincere, people have appreciated him and suddenly he loses the election. Because it's, politics is not so easy. <laughs> you may be good but people are voting to you voting for you are not so educated, so not so motivated to vote for a good person. So you are fighting against a very complex system where we want honesty, sincerity, everything. Good things to happen, but people are not supporting such people. So you need to actually have a campaign in changing the mindset. And that's how slowly one or two, you know, educated, well-meaning people get into the politics then the systems change because you don't understand the value of a your politician because if you are a legislator in the assembly you make laws you make laws for the people so if you are an MLA and if you many of you get it you can be the change makers by making laws in the assembly by making laws in the parliament it's very easy to talk I'm just telling you these are all ideas which I'm throwing across to you because it's a very tough journey to, you know, uh, get into politics, change the system. But yes, some of you youth should definitely work, or at least you can work with people who are well-minded. Try to understand how it is, go about, and try to get changes. Because policy making is very, very important. As you know, the policies, the laws and rules, etc., are done by the politicians. And if you are not part of that system, it's very, very difficult for you. Similarly, I suggest some of you join if you are in PUC, you don't know what to do as a career. People who don't like science, people who don't like uh, maths, they don't know, they go to arts. These days arts has no value. So you can always try to become lawyers. You know, you have five years course after, P uh, after PUC, you have five years course as lawyers. After graduation, you have lawyers. And many of the lawyers are also, you know, you become judges, many of the youngsters would study well, want to join corporates again, or want to go abroad, so they don't want to get into courts and uh, go for litigation and take up criminal and civil cases. So once you become lawyers, you are there, if you become a judge, you give the best judgments. You know, some of the judgments which come, we all read and sometimes we are flabbergasted, how did this kind of horrible judgments come, sometimes we are really, but we wonder, but why not, some of you get into it and you know try to change uh, the judicial system why don't you give good judgments there's so many people who come and say our land is grabbed our house is grabbed by somebody you don't get a proper judgment from the court and uh, because of uh, various things which happen so i think that is one area you can join the, the other area i was thinking is all of you could uh, also, there is the media, the press, and the electronic and print media, which brings the actual facts to the minds of the to, uh, actual facts to the light, and for people to know. And these are some areas where you can really speak the truth, fight for the truth, bring a lot of hidden stories, hidden information to the knowledge of the notice of the um, people. So there are various areas. Now, if you come to the SDG as he had mentioned, uh, zero poverty and zero hunger. Can you imagine after so many centuries, I was thinking we are still talking of elimination of hunger and elimination of poverty. And all this form part of the administration, all this form the part of policy making. Why are we talking of removal of 
poverty and hunger they should be part of the agenda of the government from years, generations. Because when we join service, we are talking of uh, BPL below the poverty line, raising people below the, above the poverty line. It never happened. And I'll tell you uh, one example. If one person in a family, you know, gets a job, then automatically that family's uh, income will go above the poverty line. So when uh, I was in government, the government was talking of so many bhagya, anna bhagya, shira bhagya, e bhagya, a bhagya. Then I told the CM why we, talk, we are talking of anna bhagya, shira bhagya, udyoga, of course udyoga bhagya is okay. Let us go for udyoga bhagya. Let us skill one person in a family, let us give job to one person in a family. So once you, one person in the family gets a job, you don't have to think of any of these anna bhagya, shira bhagya, e bhagya, agarva. one job, somebody gets 10 to 15,000 in a village, then the entire family's economic level goes. Why don't we focus more on health and education? Which, of course, is happening because I don't blame that things are not happening because when we were in service, people used to walk kilometers to go to a school and there used to be one school room and teachers used to be absent. They were outsourcing teachers. Teacher used to stay in the Taluka headquarters used to ask the local boy to go and teach and he used to be giving some money. That was the standard of education at that time. But now a lot of good things have happened, school rooms have come, school buildings have come up, a lot of scholarships are being given, hostels, etc, etc, a lot of good things are happening. But you are watching all this as an outsider. So I personally feel all of you as youth need to get into whichever sec sector or section which gives you the passion, gives you the desire, gives you the opportunity to work directly with the people and you should be the people to bring about the change. So I just would like to end my this thing because these are areas where we can talk. I was just uh, uh, talking, thinking about um, how do we get the changes. Okay, now we have the new national education policy which has come. Now the education policy talks of skilling students from the uh, school level. I was also thinking, now you had, we, when we were in uh, districts, we had a program called Mehuru Yuvaka Kendra. Even now it may be that the Sangatana is there. And they are coming for the youth. But what do they do? They generally talk of uh, competitions for the youth. You know, the youth, the, the nation building, though, the, though it says the whole program is for nation building and the personality development of the youth, Hardly there is a direct uh, you, um, role of these, uh, this program for getting the youth into the nation building. So I think we need to look at, like Akshara as a foundation, can look at these youth uh, programs and probably we suggest change in the curriculum of these programs which are very outdated and which are there for only two years. So that uh, may, may, maybe you can be a great uh, change maker in giving recommendations to the government of India and also to the state government, how these youth programs like the national service uh, schemes for the youth, etc. can be changed. So I was just reading about our Prime Minister's one quote which said, mere good governance is not enough. It has to be pro-people, proactive, and good governance is putting people at the center of development process. So what is good governance is keeping people at the center of development process, keeping people's interest in mind, take, looking at all sections of the society. You have the SESTs, you have the women, you have the minorities, you have uh, the uh, people who are living in far-flung areas, especially in South Canada. You know, people live very, very far away from the main street. So you need to get all those people into the mainstream of developmental process. The benefits which government is giving or government programs are planned should reach each and every one and that is what is called good governance. So the youth of India learns the past from the elders and from the books, evaluates uh, with the present and thinks rationally about the future. They are therefore the repository of knowledge, information, of opinion. So, we cannot uh, we always build the future for the youth, but we can build the youth for the future. So with this, I conclude my uh, speech. There are so many uh, points which I wanted to raise, which we can uh, discuss later. And uh, thank you very much again for uh, calling me for this uh, 
wonderful uh, uh, importance of youth in governance program because this small program can be taken to a, la, to a higher level, to a Karnataka, to the rest of India. We can have a very good campaign. You know, ultimately what we need is a massive campaign for involving the youth in the process of development. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing light about the leadership, governance, the role of individual in the society and let us know about how to be a change maker in the society. Thank you. Now, I would request Srimati Ruchi Ghanasyama, retired IFS, former High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, to enlighten us with her words. Thank you. so much. Let me first thank Dr. Shusha Bhatt, Managing Trustee of Akanksha Foundation for organizing this event and for giving me the privilege of meeting all the bright young people who are present here today as well as of a brilliant speaker of the day, Srimati Ratna Prabha IAS, who just gave such an extensive presentation on how youth can be engaged with the process of governance, giving so many practical examples from her life. I'm also so glad to meet Mr. Murli Krishna, Vice Principal, St. Lucius PU College, Bangalore. I was admiring the college from my room and I walked in front last night. So I'm really glad to be here. So my job is to speak to you for a very short while because you've already heard a very extensive presentation. But I was, as I was thinking about the role of youth in governance, the first question that comes to my mind is, why should the youth have a role in governance? If you go by the traditional wisdom, all wisdom resides in our minds because we are older generation. We know more. We have seen the world. Who are you? You have not seen the world. You don't know anything. Why should you tell me what to do? So the first question is, what, why is there a need for the youth to be involved in the process of governance? And the reason is very simple. Two things I would say here. First is that today's world, as they say, it's a flat world. Age does not necessarily mean greater wisdom. Because you have access to information, you, in fact, you have better ways to find information than my generation. So there is an equalization that has taken place between young people and older generation. But more than that, the policies that are made today are going to have their impact tomorrow. And who will be there tomorrow to face the, that impact? It is your generation. Because my generation, whatever we did, in our lives, whatever policies we made, whatever kind of country, society that we created, we will be leaving it behind to you. And you will be responsible for dealing with it, for living with its consequences, and for trying to survive in, in the best way possible that you can. So if that is the case, shouldn't you, the youth, have a voice? in what kind of policies are made today by today's policy makers. To give a very simple example, climate change. Who is going to be living the worst of this impact? By the time this world becomes unlivable, if it goes this way, it will become unlivable. I may be dead and buried 10 fathoms deep. 
but you will still be around. You have to face the consequences of extreme heat, of soil erosion that makes it difficult to grow food, of rising sea water levels that are eating away at our coastlines and Mangalore being right on the coast, you will be facing that. So shouldn't you have a say in which way the government is going? When the government decides what should be its priorities, should it be to give free laptops or should it be to develop the coastline, work on the mangroves, whatever it is. When the cake is small, when the kitty is small and the demands are more, there is always competition for resources. And the youth must bring their thinking into that process. Because the older generation, the, today, the policy makers of today may think of today and maybe tomorrow. But the youth can think of 10 years or 15 years down the road because that is when you will be around to enjoy the or suffer the consequences. So you should have a voice in policy making. Now how do you do that? I think you heard some excellent suggestions from Mrs. Vartha Prabha based on her own personal experience. But more than that, I think it is very important, speaking in a general way, she has given you practical suggestions, but in a general way, it is very important for young people to be concerned, to be aware, to have knowledge. If you don't read about climate change, you don't know that it is a problem that needs to be dealt with by today's policy makers. So first and foremost, you have to be conscious of what's happening in the world, not just in your little world, but the bigger world as well. And then you have to raise a voice. If somebody comes, maybe, maybe you yourself want to join politics, that's good if you do, but if you don't, you can always question the people who are in politics. If they say, we'll do this and we'll do that, well, you have the right to ask the question. How will they do it? Where will they find the funds from it? And so on and so forth. So have awareness, have knowledge, and then ask the questions, be concerned, be a concerned citizen. And then form organizations like this is what the Prabha told us about the youth uh, organizations who told her about the uh, Devdasis working in the state, like Akansha is trying to work with the young people, form organizations, be a role model. It does not matter whether you lead a million people or you lead five people, but if you live, if you show by example, there will be some benefit created by it, even if the numbers are not large. So those are some of the things that come to my mind as to how you can become a good concerned citizen and an active citizen to uh, ensure that policy makers do not forget the interest of the future generation when they make policies. With that, I'll take your leave and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for letting us know about the practical challenges and the possible approaches for the solution for a change maker in the society. Thank you. Now, I will request Mr. Murli Krishna, Vice, Vice Principal of St. Aloysius Pew College, to give the presidential address. The respected dignitaries of the days, invitees and delegates, good morning to you all. At the outset, uh, let me first congratulate and appreciate uh, Akamsha 
charitable trust Puttur for hosting this uh, national youth conference which focuses on achieving sustainable development goals by 2030. I am quite uh, happy to be with you and uh, consider it as an honor and privilege to share the days with uh, distinguished bureaucrats and diplomats. And uh, Ratna Prabha Madam just mentioned uh, about how uh, I look like a student. Uh, on the, this. Uh, in fact, it was quite a learning experience for me listening uh, to such eminent uh, uh, bureaucrats and uh, diplomats, the practical uh, life experiences which uh, she has encountered during her service. And uh, I must also thank uh, Dr. Sri Shabad for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity uh, over here. See, at various platforms, it's cliche to mention that youth are the future of our country. The role of the youth is important and it's very enormous in nation building. But then what happens is uh, the platforms available for our students and youth to get involved and to get educated on matters like equality, social justice, governance, politics, tolerance, peace, harmony, or uh, sustainable resources, climate and environment are quite limited in our schooling and in our courses. And uh, in this context, the role of NGOs and organizations like Akamsa Charitable Trust and such events holds a significance in providing a forum to learn, discuss and deliberate issues of national and global interest. I therefore urge all the participants to utilize this opportunity to work uh, and uh, to be proactive in the proceedings that follow, strengthen the parts, partnerships that you will build over here and uh, work on a roadmap that will arrive at this two-day event. It is also a pleasure and a satisfaction for me to point out that the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, uh, just glancing around uh, uh, on the stage, and I find the 17 Sustainable Goals, uh, and these are in sync with the ideology and the management of St. Aloysius institutions that it envisions uh, for its students. Uh, Madam uh, Ruchi Ghansha mentioned about uh, our campus in our address and uh, just to give you uh, one or uh, two messages about one or two little information about our institution over here and the work that we do over here. Uh, St. Aloysius institutions are uh, run by Jesuits. It's an order of Catholic priests uh, which have a worldwide uh, presence. And some of the oldest and uh, the finest institutions, uh, let it be science, commerce, management, law, in India are run by the Jesuits. And this campus uh, uh, is in place since 1880 and I would uh, suggest to all of you to this campus is also on the world tourism map uh, those of you who are in and around Mangalore might know this place uh, there is, uh, it has got a chapel it has got a chapel, St. Alicia's Chapel one of the world's finest paintings uh, is over here and uh, we also house a museum nearby so uh, suggestion to all of you uh, during these two days to maybe uh, just today it might be possible, tomorrow might be a Sunday for the museum, chapel is always open. But then uh, what we look at in our uh, institution over here, uh, some of the preferences that we look to imbibe in our youth, uh, in our educational institutions over here, uh, some of the points might be 
solidarity with the less privileged and those who are neglected, the integral formation of youth with values like justice, equality, constitutional awareness, human rights, or creating social consciousness, peace, justice, and interreligious harmony, and caring for our common home, the Mother Earth. We at St. Aloysius Institutions strive and put in efforts to inculcate these preferences into our academic curriculum and events. But then coming back to this conference, let me wish each and every participant the very best for the next two days and hope that the time spent over here is quite productive. I once again thank the organizers for the opportunity and the time provided to me and good, good wishes to them on behalf of St. Aloysius PU College for a fruitful and successful youth meet. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your, for your valuable words. Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. Now I would like to call upon Dr. Sunil Casey, Trustee Akamsha Charitable Trust, to propose the vote of thanks. Acknowledging that you are grateful for the things you have in life is the foundation of all abundance. Good morning everyone. So this is Sunil Casey, trustee of Akamsa Charitable Trust, here to express the vote of thanks for the inaugural function of National Youth Conference 2022. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the inaugurator of the today's function, Srimati Ratnaprabha, retired IAS, former Chief Secretary of Government of Karnataka, for inaugurating today's function and inspiring the youth with your valuable words. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to extend my gratitude towards Srimati Ruchi Ganeshyam, retired IFS, former High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, for being here with us as a chief guest and addressing the gathering. Thank you, ma'am. I also wholeheartedly thank Mr. Murli Krishna, Vice Principal of St. Aloysius PU College, Mangalore, for presiding inaugural function of the National Youth Conference 2022. Thank you, sir. I extend my gratitude towards Dr. Shrisha Bhatt, Managing Director of Akamsha Charitable Trust, who also is the visionary behind all our events for coming up with this platform for the youth of the nation. Thank you, sir. The center of attraction for National Youth Conference are its delegates. I'd like to thank all the delegates from various parts of the country for being here with us and making this event a successful one. Thank you all. There are always some people to be thankful for. I'm very grateful for all the members of Akansha Charitable Trust who have put all their efforts into planning this program and are here to make the plan a beautiful reality. Thank you all. <laughs> Last but not the least, I'd like to thank everyone who is behind my lights, food and everything that make it National Youth Conference 2022. I hope that you will make the full use of the program and join hands uh, in building the nation. Thank you one and all. All the very best. Thank you. Dr. Sunil Casey, Trustee Akantra Charitable Trust, for being a supporting hand throughout the event. Thank you, one and all. By this, uh, we will be uh, we'll be ending this inaugural event. Thank you to all the dignitaries on the days and off the days. Uh, after this event, it will, we will be having a short activity break, followed by which we will be having an interactive session with Srimati Ratna Prabhama with Ranjan Bellarpani. Thank you.
management contributed personality, education, values and social responsibilities in various famous all over India. He has also given talks on radio and visual media about awareness among the students and youngsters. So it's our privilege to have Mr. Ranjan Bellarpadi as a moderator for this panel discussion. Welcome Mr. Ranjan Bellarpadi. Okay, 
Being born to our parents is not in our hands. So we are born to our parents, we are very grateful to them, we have their love and affection. The second thing is we are brought up in a particular area, we are brought up in a particular school. That is also not in our hands. You are born in a particular community, these days community is becoming such a major issue. But all of you as a youth should not think of your community. You should think that you are just human beings. So there are these inevitable things like being born in a particular family, being born in a particular area, being brought up in a particular mindset. Okay, your father's mindset may be different, your mother's mindset may be different, your grandfather, your grandmother, your friends, etc. You are surrounded by a different mindset and you should be in a position to understand what is good and what is bad. How do you pick up good thoughts? Okay, and for that you need to read and read and read. As you read different thinkers, different books, you get to know so much around, which is not around you, but so much of thought processes. And how, especially if you read autobiographies, biographies of people, you will come to know how their mindset changed. I'm so fortunate visiting with somebody from the Ramakrishna Mutt because that was the example I was about to give and suddenly I realized that Ramakrishna, when he, his parents asked him to go into the puja room and to pray, he saw the rat coming and slowly taking the prasada and uh, going, the banana. And then his mind started uh, thinking. He started thinking, what is this puja we are doing? What is this we are doing with the rat? is taking the prasada and going. What is it? What we are doing is right. And that is how his mind started thinking, processing. And then his entire mindset of having this whole change came into his mind and what he practiced in the whole world as the Ramakrishna ideology and the Ramakrishna mission with us. I don't know, by chance, you know, you came and sat here. I always, you know, uh, think a lot about him because we are brought up in a different environment, but our mind set, mind processes have to undergo changes, seeing the practicality, seeing the reality, and you should emerge as the game changers, as the change makers. So that is how the youth has to contribute towards the growth and change of the society. We have to come out of the rut which we are born and brought up. If it's a very involved family, very good thing, it is very good. But everybody cannot be brought up in such a family. But you as educated youth, as a free thinking youth, as a forward thinking youth, you need to think how you can bring about that particular change which is happening around you. So with this words, I request uh, Ranjan from the Ramakrishna Mission to start the interactive session. Good morning to everyone. It's my privilege that I'm sitting with a man with an epitome of uh, you know, professionalism where she is a personification of public service, I can say. Where she, in her tenure, you have to just go through her bio data, and it's beautifully mentioned in the website also. Where, you know, selflessly she has done, and as an officer, she gone beyond and did a tremendous things in a uh, sector in her own capacity. So, ma'am, uh, become the you know uh, completed. You know, she was a 1981 batch of IAS, and at the age of 22, can you imagine? How old are you? 21, 22. Ma'am was almost an IS officer at that time, you know. And used to see her picture, the old picture, the young girl was sitting on the table, wooden table and putting a signature. If you go through the TED talk of her uh, in, on the women, women entrepreneur and you, can, you have to see just, I can see the young girls who are here just reflect, ref, reflecting uh, her days. And uh, you know, you'd be very, I was curious and to know more about Madam, but where our MC, she covered most of the things, but some of the things which she may not cover, she created over 2,50,000 jobs in the ICT sector, okay, and, and single-handedly transformed 
VEPZ, the Vizag Special Economic Zone with a turnover of 1,000 crore. My dear friends, the government sector, imagine. And further, you'll be very happy to, uh, no, I'm very happy to mention this. She drafted an action plan for Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. Okay, that action plan is from Madam. Okay, so we have to give a big round of applause for that. And recently, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has appreciated her and she has given, he said that example to the other public servants who must, uh, who are aspiring to be a public servant, she is a role model. That's what the Honorable Prime Minister said about Madam. And I feel, I'm, I'm, I'm much convinced that she is a right person to this topic. That is the need of the our inclusion of youths in the policy making and implementation. My dear friends, when you get some time, you just go through her website and just check out her very interesting book called Chronicles of an uh, AC Sahib. The Chronicles of an AC Sahib. It's a very interesting book where you can go through her experience as an officer in policy making. So, and she has received a lot of awards uh, from a different, uh, you know, uh, departments and uh, institutions. Among which I want, want to mention is so worth mentioning is Women of the Year for 1999 and 2000 by American Biographical Institution. This is the award she got, Women of the Year in 1999. So this, in this background, I feel that she is worth here and addressing you all. Please, my dear friends, keep your cell phone aside. And it's a very interesting session. And we need your presence. It's not an... My, uh, myself and Adam is going to speak. It's you that you should raise a question uh, and I will moderate and I am going to give an answer. So my dear friends, you are all very much aware that this very theme of uh, youth conference by Akanksha Charitable Trust is focused on youth policies and youth in policy making. I feel that policy is access, transparency and accountability and policy making, uh, making is a core of core function of democracy and if i go further i can say that it is a need of the art certainly that rightly the topic has been mentioned that you in the policy making and the implementation so i, I want to place a very first question to madam in this uh, note that madam according to the data it shows that in, it's, it's recently by the government of Karnataka, uh, it's said, said that out of 7.5 crores of Karnataka population, 30% are youth, which means 2.11 crore is youth. In India, nearly more than 50% is youths. It is much important that the youth should participate in this policy making process. But I have a genuine concern question that how committed we are the youths and what is our role in it can you please uh, show some light on this so as uh, yachi madam had mentioned generally the thinking is you know we are all experienced people and we know everything and we need to form the policies for everyone which includes the youth also so generally when government, whether it's a state government or the central government, when they make the policies for whether it's youth or for women or for any other department, it is done by a group of uh, people, officers, some representatives of that particular industry or sector, and then the policy is formed, which is the top-down process. Generally, it is the top-down process. It has to be the bottom-up process. If the policies come from the bottom, that is, suppose there is a policy for youth, then it is the youth associations who need to give the policy. The youth associations or the youth or the colleges. So, we need to get the policies from the bottom to the top. Then the top people see what is needed for them and create the policy. But what is happening is, is the top bottom approach. Yes, yes. And that is why when we think of programs and uh, it reaches the people, the people feel it's upside down. They feel this is not what we want. For example, when I was seeing the youth policies, when it said youth 
programs of a nation building and skilling the youth in their personality building. So that is the ideology of the government, which is very good. But what are the programs that we are having at the ground level? It doesn't gel with this. Now, suppose yes. we are talking of SDGs, hmm. we are talking of uh, no poverty and no hunger, and you are saying involving the youth. We don't find the youth getting involved with these kind of uh, ideology. Exactly. And it's very sad that after, even as a country, after so many years of uh, independence, almost across 75 years, we are still talking of no poverty and no yes. hunger. So this is happening because of the lopsided development and uh, mechanical way of administration. Yes. So as you said, and as I have been proposing, it's always good that these kind of associations, you know, they come up with suggestions after this kind of a youth conference. What the youth really need? A paper, a white paper can be prepared with the, all your recommendations and it can be sent to the state government and it can be sent to the central government and then we keep pushing it. It's not that once you send a recommendation it gets accepted. Correct. You have to go on pushing it and talking about it in social media platforms, sending it to prime minister or various people and somewhere out of the 10 recommendations you have given, 4-5 may get uh, accepted because we are a huge nation and so many different layers are involved in decision making that becomes very difficult for the people at the bottom of the layer mm -hmm. to reach to the top. Okay. But we should not give up. We should go on trying. Somewhere it clicks. Yes, very nicely said, sir. The very system, what Madam is trying to tell, is from top to down. But Madam is envisaging that from down, from bottom to up, it should move. And Madam gave a beautiful action plan for all of us. You can make note of it that you have to make a white paper, which means you have to, you know, uh, make list of the issues which you are coming across in your day-to-day -day life in the society, and the solutions also. And Take the help of this kind of association where Akanksha is here, very active it's doing, where a number of institutions are here, we will get associate and send your ideas, issues and the solutions to the government and some of the ideas will be accepted. That's what Madam is beautifully said. That I, I, I Certainly Madam, what you said that the same message was given by Swami Vivekananda that my faith in younger generation modern generation, out of them will come my workers. They will work the whole problem like lions. See, you are a lion that you should not get disappointment. You should go on, keep on trying. That's what Madam is giving a beautiful message. But when I come to a policy uh, making, it's very, uh, you know, uh, easy to propose or hard to uh, implement and hardest to sustain. So, but, but, but when I look into the policies of the countries or maybe some kind of programs, so can you please suggest some of the essential elements to, to our youngsters to make this policy a successful? If the youngsters want to give some policy ideas to the government, what are the very prerequisites which can include in, in their white paper to government can accept and make it more successful? So what is first needed is uh, you should have a copy of the present policy. Okay. Keep a copy of the present youth programs, youth policies, and you people have a discussion on that. Each area, just uh, discuss about it. Suppose it's the role of youth in nation building. Is the purpose of this youth programs? Okay, that is the first purpose. The purpose is role of youth in nation building and the personality development of the youth through entrepreneurship, etc, etc. So, this is the theme. Under that, what is proposed? And whether what is proposed is actually being implemented, that you may not know, but whether actually that is needed or you suggest something more for that and why? Why you suggest? So, when we are talking of involving youth in the developmental process, say at the village level or at the taluka level or the district level or the state level, then the youth in that particular area need to be necessarily involved in the government programs in that area. Exactly. Otherwise, if they have a different program for the youth, they say, because I also work as DC, that Nehru Yodh Kendra uh, 
यू नो कॉर्डिनेटर इश्क कम मक्कल या वो रोड हाफ टाइम रहता है ओके गुड डूइंग द रोड इट्स अ गुड बिकॉज़ वी नो हाउ टू डू यू नो बिल्ड अ रोड एंड द शमदाना कम्स है से ऑल दैट कम्स इन टू बट इज इट ऑल कंपनीशन बिल्डिंग नो वी आल्सो नीड नीड टू नो द ग्राम पंचायत पॉलिसीज व्हाट आर द स्कीम्स कमिंग इन हाउ इट इज इंप्लीमेंटेड एंड दे नीड टू बी टेकन इन एज वॉलंटियर्स ओके दैट इज व्हाट आई वांटेड टू मेंशन आई जस्ट मेड अ फ्यू नोट्स Please. Uh, see, there are few things which have recently been started by the present government and the honourable prime minister, uh, which talks of opportunities to work with political consultancies like IPAC that cover area from election campaigning to constituency development. This is something which was not there earlier. So the youth have uh, opportunities to work with the political consultancies. Suppose this is an MP or uh, you know. MLA, who is contesting for election, he will appoint a political consultant like that PK yes. and people like that. Yes. So the youth have an opportunity to work with that consultant. So he will help you. I mean, it's only for your knowledge, or uh, that may also finally attract you to become a politician. <laughs> But you can work on a political campaign. Yeah. Then you will get to know what all political campaign means. What you go to the people. You will talk to them. You get to know their issues. People will say, "Namge ni rilla, mane rilla, adilla." In the namge do all the money sanction made bro. Second installment sanction agi rilla. So in the all in the some say all all the talk. So you will get to know what are the issues, burning issues, and as a youth or as a person, what you can contribute. The other one is PM's Rural Development Fellowship. Prime Minister's Rural Development Fellowship. These young. professionals ya yeah, youth are working with the deputy commissioners and the deputy commissioner sends them to the village level mm. to the ground level institutions like zilla panchayat sataluka panchayat gram panchayat and these youth help the deputy commissioner for capacity building of those institutions at the village level the other one is prime minister's charitable charcha An initiative that lacks of Indian youth to directly talk to the PM and bring the breeze of change. Okay, you all have to find out what is the ways yes. of you know getting. Which is which is suitable for me. Yeah. yeah. So maybe these youth one day they take them up, they can be involved in PM's uh, Jai Pe Charcha, and they can directly talk to the Prime Minister. But first of all, you have to make the issues. You have to make your recommendations, and then you can go to the Prime Minister's Jai Pe Charcha and say. part of the uh, whole akanksha initiative and the road of you in governance and these are the recommendations we have done and you can send it across to pms office and also try to participate you know these are all areas where you can all get in then in the parliamentary policy space the leg legislative assistance to members of parliament fellowship there is a fellowship program where for every mp that is member of parliament you can join as a legislative assistant it is called lamp l a m p legislative assistant to members of parliament it's a unique chance for young indians to be mentored by mps for a period of 11 months the fellowship works with the fellow works for a full time with an mp providing research inputs to mps parliamentary interventions so these are all fellowships internships serve as a such stepping stone for you to join public uh, Service. Now these are the programs which were not there earlier. Now these are the programs which have come recently. But uh, I really don't know how many have benefited, how people have got into it. But these are all avenues open. In fact, Niti Aayog also uh, gives these opportunities to people who want to do some fellowship programs, who are MBAs, or no, who are the MSW, or people who want to be in social work. So these are all opportunities where all of you can sort of uh, join, get in. It's not possible for everyone because, but one, one, one getting into various things together, you people can contribute to the growth of the nation. Really, what is the question was? The question was that how uh, how the uh, essential elements to make our policy successful. Yeah. So how to make the policy successful? As I said, see the existing policy. See what are the loopholes in the policy. What you feel is practical, where you 
what is that you want, you can put in the recommendations. And if any one of you have very innovative ideas, new ideas, don't think, uh, don't think shy. You may think that uh, this idea may, may not be accepted, or this idea may sound silly, or uh, you know people may not uh, uh, recognize what you have said. Don't think bad because as youngsters, you know you have the freedom to say, get something different from uh, what you know typically a bureaucrat or somebody thinks. So that is the freedom for you, and uh, you should take advantage of it. I think this whole thing has come at the right time because we have the budget coming up in February and March yes. and recommendations are being taken from various uh, organizations. So you also please send your recommendations and see that it comes through. If it doesn't come through, don't get disappointed. Even we as officers give so many recommendations, but doesn't come through. As I said, I told the CM why so many bhagyas give uh, only few of the bhagya. So it's fine, you know, but I tried on my own to uh, do this with Yoga Bhagya, not in a scheme, but I tried to make a scheme with it as well. So we can do it, see, uh, so never get disappointed if your ideas don't get accepted. Keep pushing it till finally it is daylight. Okay? Right. It was a wonderful replay and uh, no, well prepared uh, notes, actually. My dear friends, you just. Uh, you should make note of it, you know, the fellowship is really an amazing opportunity for you to explore the different departments and where you can learn what is policy and how I can involve in policy making uh, such questions. My, my dear friends, soon after this question, I am coming towards you, which means that you can uh, stand up and start, mic will be passed to you and you can start asking the questions. Uh, I have one more question, till then you prepare yourself for the question and I will come to madam. But my third question is that, uh, we have a, a, a tremendous youth population in the country and everybody knows that youths can do fantastic things because they are flexible, they have an infinite uh, capacity and potential, restlessly they can work uh, unlike the uh, uh, senior citizens uh, but they can go out, travel, explore, they can sacrifice their ego also but if I see our Indian parliament uh, nearly in, in, in the first parliament, which uh, the elected representative for the Indian parliament in 1952, the total percentage was 26 percent, which is under 40 age. The youth under 40 in the year 1956, the first parliament election, the nearly is about 26 percent. If you see our recent general election was happened in the parliament in 2019, the youth population under 40 is just 13 percent, 1 3 percent. But uh, are we uh, running behind, the youths are running behind, why they are not, uh, there is no uh, privilege for them to participate in this uh, democratic process or maybe the policy making processes? See, basically uh, why even I mentioned in my talk about youth uh, not participating in the political process, whether it's MP, MLA, Gram Panchayat, Zila Panchayat, Taluka Panchayat and things like that. Now, uh, the one thing is, first thing is the mindset that uh, parents want their, there's such a competitive world and the parents want their child to get 98%, if they, the child get 98%, there's some joke that the mother is still crying because 2% uh, is, uh, is missing. So that is the level of expectations, unfortunately, from the mothers and the fathers that their daughter or son should excel extremely well. But they, they just don't realize what they have performed. You know, they are, they are not thinking about their life, but then they put... Children should check their parents' mask cards. <laughs> so that is one thing is the expectation of the parents that the child should perform extremely well. Second thing is once a child performs extremely well, become a doctor or an engineer. These are the two things in our country. Engineer, do go do something, go abroad for an MS or join an IT company and earn something. Doctor, you do a graduate or something, then become a work in a hospital or whatever. So there, there is no encouragement for the child to join politics. Okay, so that is why you will find the decreasing trend of uh, uh, youth joining the politics. Now, second thing is you also see this in women also. 
you see the percentage of women MPs, yes. the percentage is 11 percent, yes. youth is 13 and women is 11. Yes. Whereas uh, in the Jilla Panchayat and Gram Panchayat, what has happened is government of India has brought a notification of 50 percent reservation, reservation for women in the um, Jilla Panchayat election. Local election. Local body. Local, local body is 50 percent. So you see the women compulsorily have to contest. And sometimes what happens is the husband will make the wife to contest because your particular area is notified as a reserve for women. The husband, if he was there earlier, he'll make his wife uh, contest. Yes. And he will try to run the government uh, behind, backseat driving. He will like to do that. But some women, you know, first year they will allow their husbands to control them, but after two, three years they start learning. They feel very ashamed that the man is controlling them and they start running the administration and all. This whole thing is a new concept called Sarpanj Patis in uh, North India. This word Sarpanj Pati, because it's the Pati's husband. So if the lady is a Sarpanj, the Sarpanj ka Pati, who's the husband, he runs the, the Gram Panchayat, he will come and sit in the meeting. He will not allow the wife to open the mouth. And the men also know, they will say, let him come to, uh, talk. He will not allow the servants to talk. So that is the kind of uh, uh, situation. The women are also working, the youth also working. Youth want to, uh, up, they feel they study uh, for uh, 21 years. They want to have a relaxed life, they want to enjoy, they want to get married, they want to have children, they want to do business, they want to do. So they don't want to get into the tough life of nation building or uh, you know, having the social obligation. Women also, they want to get in, they are not allowed to get in. As a result, only these men who are actually yes. free and not doing anything, they enter yeah. into the politics. Second thing is now, presently for politics, a lot of money is needed. Yes. That money, because as it is here, I told you the story of Nagraj, the, what Nagraj is here, our Kannada movie, Humble politician Nagra. Politician Nagra. Yes. Oh, he is so uneducated, so uncool, yes. so rough. And there is this very smart boy, Arun Patel, who comes from abroad. He wants to change the system, he wants to contest. But when he clashes with this guy, he realizes that corruption and people's mindset is for people like Nagra, not for people like this. Yes. So the whole thing is very, very tough. But we need to start somewhere. Are we going to still sit and say, okay, youth are not allowed, women are not allowed, the ex are not allowed, and we will allow only the general people to run the government? No. You need to seriously think. And since you are young, you can always start a, a gram panchayat, yes. contest in your own area, change to, try to change your own area, get to know the political situation, and then move ahead. It's not that everyone should become a doctor, everyone should become an engineer, everyone uh, should be cut off from the social obligation once you have reached, say, 30 plus. It's not necessary. You can think of nation building. And many of you, if you get into it, definitely there will be a change. I gave an example of this girl who is, uh, you know, from Rajasthan. She was brought up in Jaipur in a very traditional family where everybody had to put a gungat and all that. At least in South India, we don't have that problem of a girl putting the gungat and all that. But uh, her grandfather was the sarpanch of the particular village and she said, why not me go? Why not me try? And we see a picture, she is wearing pants and tops. She is not, uh, you know, dressed up like that. She is wearing the pants and tops, born there, mingled with the people. It took years for her, but she changed it. But you may ask the person, can he afford to do it? We also need a livelihood. We also need to make our life. So you need to make a compromise. So many of these people, what they do is they earn quite a lot. They make their money and then step into doing this kind of a social service. You can always work on it. Social service can be done. And as you keep doing social service, you get to know people and you need to get into it. Then, next, government consents can make a conscious effort. When you talk of nation building, how do you involve the youth in nation building, keeping them away from the nation building? Yes. So government themselves can encourage you to participate, just as you are encouraging them to go as volunteers. They can be encouraged to work as nominated members. There is this provision for nominated members. So nominated members, 
Some of the youth can go and work as nominate members. They get to know what is happening. Then they build their career. Of course, it's very, very tough, as you said. Uh, many of the youth, even if they are interested and even if they are socially conscious, they find it tough because participating in a political activity does not give them any income. But one thing all of you youth can do is participate in the election process. Many of the youth, they say, oh, this MLA is bad, that MLA is bad, what to go and vote. So you don't go and vote. Because every person who has more than 18 percent, I mean 18 years of age, can go and vote. By voting to the right person, also you are uh, playing the role of nation building. Because indirectly you are helping the right person to get elected to represent your area. The first thing all of you can do is now that we are having the election next year yes. for Karnataka yes. up and the parliament in 24, all of you should start voting, all of you should start working for the right candidate Correct. and so that you know people have the pressure that the youth may not vote for me if I don't perform well, that also is a part of the nation building. Yes. Yourself may not go and uh, contest, but you can be a social pressure on the candidate that if you don't perform, we, uh, we are not with you. That's well said, right. well said, well said. Certainly the youths can uh, create a movement where they can have a significant impact on the society and the policy makers telling that we are united and we want to get this work done and that's what I was expecting from Madam and let's start small you may not be entered into politics but you can involve in the democratic process and electoral process at as Madam said uh, there's an institutions or a companies like I, I, IPAC where you can involve as a fellowship, where you can go and do your internship, you will get a lot of ideas. Uh, may, where everyone may not be interested in the politics, but some of you may be interested in that note, I ask this question. So let us go towards our young delegates who are present over here. So uh, can somebody raise your hand to ask questions? Yes, please. Can uh, organizers please pass the mic? Please. Uh, your name and the city or institution you are representing and the question to the matter. It can be in the short form. Yeah, please. Hello. Good afternoon. So, myself is Anand Jain. I'm working as an HR manager. I'm Simon Jain and I'm preparing for UPSC also. So, as you said, to kind of mention that part, if I have somebody else in this side here to contest in the next MLA or MLA election, what are the essential elements? Because you know you have worked almost 41 years from 1980 and that's to take the You know the parts of the executive body and you know the parts of the executive body as well as common people. So how we can convince as an independent candidate to fight with the national or regional parties to come up with the development? As you know, overseas, uh, the candidates will go with the developmental side, environmental side and education. How we can develop the country, work in India and other start from Gram Panchayat and other elections, we will go with caste system, we will go with majority, I mean other things we will play uh, most of the uh, uh, things. So how we can uh, plan ourselves, I mean silently as a child can, go with a well-known plan to execute. I am not saying we will win one at a shot, but definitely we can start the process. So what is your suggestions and essential points to look into that? No, but uh, you said you are preparing for UPSC. You want to be an officer or politician? <laughs> no, ma'am. If you, oh, you are just asking a general question. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it, it's something like this, you know. Uh, as uh, you mentioned and as we all know, that uh, con contesting for election is a very complicated, uh, uh, complicated process itself for contesting. Either you are affiliated to a political party then the political party would select you. But to be, it's, I think I'll have to speak for five ten minutes, I'll just tell very briefly. To be part of a political party, you, know, you have to join the political party, you have to take the membership and you need to work in that area continuously. And when it's time for elections, they generally call for applications. They also have a democratic process. They call for applications from all the candidates, asking them to you know, file their application. But generally, as you said, our country, unfortunately, when we are more and more progressing, 
we are more and more becoming caste divided as you said that is very right and as a youth you need to change it it is not the community but it is the mindset which has to be there that's a different area itself where we have to work but presently to the question you asked the party will make its own calculations how many of this class how many of this class this 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 class how many are with our party and how many are with the other party okay like Take the example in Karnataka. Suppose you are doing that, then the BJP will be there. Kurpa and the Ali, Sita Maya will be there. Either so they will calculate like that, and then if you are eligible, they will be giving you the ticket. For which again you have to spend a lot for your campaign, your publicity, going from door to door, and all that stuff. But since you are preparing for the civil services, I suggest you prepare very hard, study and get through so that. You can be part of the nation building as a bureaucrat. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, madam. So he asked a question of independent. Independent campaign is very difficult because you don't have a party to support you, and you can win on your own strength. And yes. there are cases where a lot of independents have won on their own, and they have played a major role. Suppose uh, the other day I went to some uh, place. There, um, uh, BJP had 20. And uh, this uh, Congress at uh, 23, and there was one independent candidate, and that person was so much in demand. So they took the BJP, yes. took him, and then became. I mean, they were equal. Sorry, 23, 23, and uh, one was uh, taken, and they formed a government. So independents also have their role to play. But then you have to roam around continuously, build your personality. And every household should know your name. They should like you and all. It's uh, and but you still have a chance as an individual. Okay. Yeah. It's a consistent process for a greater result. So that's why I can say, Madam, I uh, let me come back to the po policies from the politics. Uh, so you will be the first lady assistant commissioner for be the uh, to the chief secretary of the government of Karnataka. and uh, it's uh, it's e easy to say policy don't work but uh, you you was you, you were in the various uh, different capacities that was it uh, difficult to implement any policy uh, but can you give your own uh, experience that you have taken some of the policy and you made it successful or some of the policy becomes failure uh, or maybe uh, you know not to the expected result Is there any such scenarios which you want to share to our young friends? See, generally uh, it depends on your mindset. Some uh, people uh, are very pessimistic. They say, "Oh, we want to work, but the environment is so bad, we can't do it." Again, you have the mindset where you say the environment is uh, not very conducive, but yet I can make it. So my experience has been that uh, wherever I work, I could really get through whatever I wanted. To. That time, so I am not a pessimist. I'm an optimist, and I think if we really, you know, passionately work, we could get things through. Now, one thing is, as far as bureaucrats are concerned, as officers are concerned, we have a very limited tenure. We have one and a half years or two years, uh, so we do not have time to study and research and this and that because by then our tenure will be over. Uh, when I interact with some officers. I mean, I call up and say uh, this case is, uh, you know, pending. They say I'm studying the thing. So I keep saying, if you are studying it, you know, tomorrow you will be transferred. You will be only studying. So we need to do things very fast. We and in the and we cannot you know, take our own sweet time because suppose I am now working an NGO, I can work at my pace because the NGO is mine and I can work at a very slow pace. But when you are in government. You have to do it very fast, and if you can do it, then you are lucky to have a long tenure. And I think uh, I was fortunate enough to work under so many chief ministers, but uh, never was I shifted suddenly or anything yes. like that. So I could get things done. Now the first thing is when I went to Chikmagalur, we had this project called Dwagra, mm -hmm. Development of Women and Children in Rural Areas. It was a new project. It was in Chikmagalur and Bijapur. It had to we had to do development through groups of women. Development for women through their groups of women. So we did form those groups, and then I had meeting with bankers and all that. The funding bankers said, "I am not going to do that. I am not going to do that." Because now, thirty-five million. Even now, there is an issue with bankers, but that nothing is better. 
ಇಲ್ಲ ಹೆಣ್ಣು ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಐ ಸಿ ರಿಯಲಿ ಪುಷ್ಟನ್ ರಶ್ ಉದ್ಯಮ ಸೈಡ್ ಸೆ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಯೂ ಟು ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಕಾನ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ನೋ ವಿ ಪುಷ್ಟ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫ್ಯಾಸಿನೇಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ವೇರ್ ಸೋ ಪ್ರಾಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಪೇಮೆಂಟ್ ದೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಗೇ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಈ ಹೆಣ್ಣು ಮಕ್ಕಳು ತುಂಬ ಇವರು ಜೆನ್ಸ್ಗಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ರಿಪೇಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಬೇಗ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಸೊ ಐ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ವಿತ್ ಭೂಮಿ ಕೇರ್ ಲೋನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಸೆಂಡ್ ನೋ ಪಿಕಲ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಪಾಪಡ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಡೂ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೊ ದೇ ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಕಾರ್ಪೆಂಟ್ ಕಾರ್ಪೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಮತ್ತು ಬೆತ್ತೆ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಾಸ್ಕೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ವೀವಿಂಗ್ ಬುಲನ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಕೆಟ್ ಆ ಟಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಮಂಗ್ಳೂರು ಚಿಕ್ಕಮಂಗ್ಳೂರು ಶೀಪ್ ಲೇರಿಂಗ್ ಗೋಟ್ ಲೇರಿಂಗ್ ಏನೋ ಪೋಲ್ಟ್ರಿ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾರಿ ವೀವಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಕೇರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕಾಫಿ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಫಿ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಗುಡ್ ಜಾಬ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಗಿವ್ ದ ಕಾಫಿ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ವಿಮೆನ್ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಮನ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಈ ಆ ಟೆನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡೇ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಡಿ ಟರ್ನ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಕೇರ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ದೇ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಸೊ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಐ ಕೂಡ ಡೂ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ Uh, I found the IT policy for Kandra uh, and then I was a deputation. Yes. Twice I found the IT policy. Yes. I changed the policy. I made it more women inclusive, startup inclusive, etc. And 1% less in yes. the asset. Yes. 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 So whatever uh, was not there, I got it included. Went to CM, presented it and they never said no. I think it's uh, how you uh, present it, present. how you impress them, how you tell them with uh, statistics, things can be done. and as i mentioned some th- 30 years to 1990 i gave all the houses in the name of women okay. and all the ashraya houses in the name of women earlier it should be given in the name of men. men so people said how did you convince the yes. local mlas because you are working in a very feudal district yes see rajjur and these are exactly contrast to mangalore you are here okay. and there and there are in the north corner <laughs> and there and how do you convince them so i had a meeting of mlas and i told them see these women are all all of them are voting for you <laughs> but it's only the men who are seeing you correct the women are not seeing the mla whom they are voting they are blindly going and voting mm-hmm. so how will it be if the women come and see you they will be so happy to receive the hakupatra from correct. you they said okay they were happy and then we had all the women sitting and even the politicians also very happy to correct. have over the hakupatra correct. to women so that's how you know how you do it as i said devdas is giving them land was such a huge yes. psychological uh, brain washing that to all the bureaucrats and all that but we had a drive the cm appreciated it so we had uh, you know that one uh, support that cm said it's a good program mari uh, so we did it so that way i feel that the literacy campaign it was a huge campaign both rajjur and devdas and that is what got me the popularity because as dcs we never go to villages we don't go to all the villages we go to a few places but because of the literacy campaign because we had to go to every village where there was no literacy we were went with all the youth youngsters all these young people who came the boys then we had lot of people from us uh, sfi dfi so many uh, organizations school students college students they all came so i think um, uh, for me uh, doing a uh, policy and executing it has been my fortune i think because many people do half the policy some people do the policy and get transferred but i could do the policy and, and execute uh, it also yes, yes. especially in the industry and you got a great opportunity to show the impact of impact. the policy and i could enjoy the impact yes. of what i had done yes. and i never had any politician stopping me i've been so lucky because when i talk to all the so more than lucky you are smart <laughs> I, yes. Because all these youngsters whom I meet, they, they say we have got uh, 80%, 90%. I tell them, why, do you write, uh, why don't you write the civil services? They say, no, no, we are scared of politicians. <laughs> they say, why should you get scared of politicians? Politicians are not going to come and sit in your office. Correct. He'll call you once in a blue moon to ask him to do something. Yes. You see whether it can be done or not. Rest of the thing is your job only. Morning and evening, you are only working. So I think uh, the even as an industry is ACI so yes, that yes. is the industrial policy
large and medium scale industries in Karnataka. Then I brought the SMEs, I brought the yes. women, I brought the SCSEs, I brought the NRIs, I brought the physically handicapped. I made the regional policy that is moving beyond Bangalore. So if you go to a North Karnataka and all that, more incentives if you come to a 100 people. Okay. okay. And in Mysore, in the, in the Adakandari you yes. know, industrial area was there, they wanted to set up, they saw the land and everything. And uh, the bureaucracy which was around Siddharamaya kept saying, better sir, better sir, better sir, ali pollution after the pollution after the So then I kept telling him, and the pollution after the land. Lastly, that whole that, uh, MD of patient phase, he said, I'm fed up. If you don't give me the land in Karnataka, I'll go off to Andhra or Telangana because they're calling me with a platter of incentives. But I like to be in Karnataka because of the brand. Then I took him to the CM, the assembly was going on. When CM came out of the assembly, I made him to, in the corner room, I made him to talk to CM. Now I did this CM, yes sir, Nimma constituency, industry set model. Now I still didn't get that idea. You can't get away from nothing, none of the other things. modern technology But uh, why 
they are not able to write the civil services. That's a very important thing and that is why I feel a conference like this when all of you youth are sitting here and you people see people like me, you see a person like Yuji. Now she is, I'm 81 batch and she's 82 batch and she's from a backward state like UP and in 1982 she could get into the foreign service. That means the what one needs is, that's what I said, you know, you, the first thing I said, your want to parents, you cannot do anything with it. That's not your choice, that was not in your hands. So the, your parents will have limited thinking uh, because based on their education or their experiences. So you have to come out of what your parents think and that can happen only when you want to change. So if you want to become a civil servant, here we have a young, I, which place of Karnataka are you? He's from Dakshin Karnataka. Dakshin Karnataka. Okay. So he's from here and he's preparing for civil services. So he is a motivation for all of us. And now because of lot of social media impact, uh, I see many people getting into civil services. In fact, in places like Bijapur and Bhagalkot, even Bidar and Gulbarga, Raichur, every year in the list there are two, three people uh, getting into the civil services from Karnataka. I don't know because Dakshin Kannada, more you are into the jobs, you know, the so-called jobs. But this is also a government job. Getting into civil services is a wonderful job. You have that uh, Guru Dath Hegde from here, yes. uh, who is who's from Udipi, he has got into the civil services. So there are several people who are getting into, but yet the number is small. And I hope the crowd and this, uh, the audience which is here are now motivated to prepare for the civil services. It's not only the UPSC, but you have the case examination, Karnataka Administrative Service, where you have the SN commissioners, the Tassindas, and various posts which Karnataka government uh, advertises. So all of you should uh, aim for that. And once you get into that, don't forget what you had when you wrote the exam. Yes. <laughs> the tragedy is once you get into the job, everybody is like, my God, now I've got a job. <laughs> I'll take a huge dowry. I'll yes. get married. And yes. As a youth, you know, you're talking against dowry. You're saying, what the hell, you know, all this nonsense of dowry. But uh, when you get into the service, yes. you think, why not? Why should I not get dowry? I've uh, got a, such a big job. Yes. I'm getting a huge salary, so why not? I'm eligible. Some people, you know, when I talk to young boys, they say that uh, when I leave this level, why should I not? It's my right to take the dowry. Oh, and the kind of things you hear, 10 crores, 20 crores, I don't know, 100 crores, how much of dowry they want to take. So as a youth, you are thinking something, but when you get into the job, your mindset changes. So that, I think you need to consciously, consciously, consciously say that I will maintain my principles, I will maintain my character, and the character building has to go on till the end of your life, not stop once uh, you know you got a particular job or something. Regarding politics, uh, I don't want to you know talk more on that because it's a tough uh, area, yeah. the tough area for yes. youngsters to go because you need money, you need so much of hard work, and I just yes. parents will not encourage because parents want you to settle down as early as uh, possible. But getting into a government job, I think parents will be really yes. encouraging. Maybe they are not aware of it. That's why I tell you, you should do a lot of reading, a lot of surfing on the net, and all get to know where all your opportunities to work and then educate your parents and this is what I want to do. I uh, just bring an end to it. My parents, my father was a civil servant, my mother was a doctor. Oh. But my brother, he wanted to do IIT, you know. Okay. And I'm talking of 19, I don't know when, oh. <laughs> some 60, <laughs> 71, 72, okay. and, or 73, 74. And he said, I want to write the IIT entrance. Uh, my father and mother, they were not aware of IITs, though they were traditional doctors. Mm -hmm. My mother said, no, no, you should do an engineering. Yeah. <laughs> but I did it better than an engineering. This is what my teacher, maths teacher told me, and he's uh, got me this application. So he applied and he, on his own, he went for IIT in Madras. Mm -hmm. So sometimes with educated parents, and we don't know what is the new uh, trend. Now if somebody comes and says, I want to do robotics, I want to do something, as a father, your father may not know what he knows only civil engineering and mechanical engineering and uh, computer engineering. Yes. You want to do something different, your father and mother may not agree, but if you know that as a future, you have to uh, convince them and do it. 
Yes. So that way, you know, you should, you need to overcome whatever your parents say if you are confident of what you want. Correct. Right. So, thanks, Chita, for this uh, lovely question. Yes. Yes, we go to another question. Yes, please. Shami Imajayate. Uh, I am Rita Amish, uh, NSS volunteer from uh, Govindas College, Ratkal, a become student. So, my question is, when we are a kid, or uh, before stepping into this youth, so-called uh, adulthood or something, so we have uh, everyone supporting us, everyone appreciating us, like Kardomita, something like that. But once you are a youth, you have so much of criticisms coming in. You have so much of people who tell, when you decide something, no, that's not yours. And also, you as an officer, so is there any situation where you have taken a decision and uh, that has went wrong and then later you have uh, faced the scenarios over there, such things, any one such uh, example of your lifetime and also how shall we go on with these negatives, how shall we stay away from this? See, if you Thank are you. very clear on what you want to do, you don't have to be influenced by uh, whoever is criticizing you or trying to discourage you. That will always happen because um, there is uh, one quotation which uh, my PA put on his status, which I really liked. He said that, uh, that quotation uh, says that sympathy you will get easily. Jealousy you have to earn. Just think of this. Think of this. Sympathy, you will get easy. If you say, oh, I don't want to tell you, oh, better, better, they will. But jealousy, you have to earn. How will you earn the jealousy? If you do something which the other cannot do and you achieve what the others cannot do, then they feel jealous of it. So you have to earn that. So people who are criticizing you, who are discouraging you, don't want you to grow in life. But if you want to do something and you are very confident, you don't have to care about that. Yes. I have faced several, if I can, I'm, I'm, you can read my second book, <laughs> where, I can, where you will see how much people have tried to stall my progress or, you know, trouble me. Or you read my first book only, what the chronicles of an AC Sam in English and Sadhane Hathi Aliyatta Kannada Dalide. It's in Sapna book depot. It's uh, around 150 rupees. In that, I have mentioned yes, in the first posting itself how people tried to trouble me because when I was getting popular, how people didn't like you know, my popularity and how the trouble you know uh, was there all the time. But at that point of time, how I overcome, overcame all the hurdles and then, you know, ultimately you do a good job and get out of it. So it's always, you know, when you are doing something good, you are doing uh, better in life, there will be so many people criticizing you, feeling jealous of you and telling you indirectly. For example, I'm telling a simple thing because ladies are there. Suppose one day the lady girl is dressed and she's looking very pretty. Suppose she's looking very pretty and another lady has found her. Uh, uh, little jealous of uh, what she is doing, she will come and say, oh, that necklace you are wearing is not suiting you. So you will say, oh, really, it's not suiting me, yeah, it's not suiting you, Rem remove it. So you will again look in the mirror and you think, but I thought it is looking good. Now it is left to you whether you feel it's looking good and you will keep it or you will listen to that person and remove it. If you remove it, that person is happy that you are not looking good now because they removed it. Okay. So these kind of small things also happen in life. So you need to really uh, 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 differentiate between what is good and what is not good for you and who are the good people around you and who are not the good people around you. It takes time. But over a period of time, you will learn in life. Only thing is you need to be confident about yourself and what you want and what you are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now if I move, I'll come back again. Uh, yes. Yeah, please. Yeah. Shama Yavajayate. I'm Shama Farhana from Goindas First Place College as a NSS volunteer and uh, studying in first year PA. So ma'am, um, the question which I have for you is, what was your motive to write UPSC and why you wanted to be an IAS officer? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a 
It's a very simple uh, question. So, as I mentioned, uh, we had a bureaucrat father and a doctor mother. And my eldest brother had uh, joined the medical college because my mother was a doctor, so it was the natural, uh, you know, desire for her uh, that her son should be a doctor. So he went to Jipmar Pondicherry to do his MBBS. And as I told you, my second brother went towards engineering. So when it uh, came to me, I was left with the option of doing either of being a civil servant or being a doctor. See, that is what I always mention that, you know, your parents make a difference. So though uh, 40 years back, most of my classmates, uh, they got married uh, after graduation or they got married after post-graduation or some of them went as lecturers, you know, some, some of them uh, went became doctors or so engineering was not there during my time. My entire college, only one lady did engineering, and later on engineering opened up. So because of the parents, there was this pressure that I have to do something. There's no way that I'm going to sit at home. You know, getting married and was all out of question. You need to first do something. So either become a doctor or an engineer. So um, uh, science, you know, is something which I found uh, very uh, difficult. They were doing those uh, dissections and uh, you know all that. Somehow that was not my cup of tea. Physics and uh, chemistry and things like that. That is the reason I think I didn't uh, move towards becoming a uh, doctor and this was the next uh, option. It was all motivation of my parents because both my mother and father wanted me to be a civil servant. That's it. Nice. So ma'am, if I move to again towards the policy making, uh, just I have one very interesting question for us that when we, when the youth, we say the youth should participate in the policy making and implementation, does this experience matter? When, when many a senior says what these youngsters can do, they don't have any experience, how they can involve in this policy making, we, it is our sole responsibility to make, it's on our rights to make the rules and regulations. That's the question commonly comes in the counter. So how to face it and how to get an enriching experience or does the experience really matter in policy making? Experience of the youth, yes. Yeah, so policy making also has uh, uh, taken a quite a change over a period of time. Maybe some 40 years back or 35 years back, the policy used to be done by the bureaucrats. They used to be sitting in uh, air conditioned chambers, either in Delhi or in uh, what was national state headquarters. Entire policy was being done by the bureaucracy. But over a period of time, there is a thinking of uh, participatory decisions. Participatory policy making came into force and the government started calling people from civil societies, NGOs, etc. to participate in the policy making. So there has been a progressive growth in the policy making. From only bureaucratic policy making, policy making has now moved towards involving the NGOs, the local bodies, the politicians, etc. So the youth also, they come into policy. But generally, I am telling you, they are bulldozed by the Bureaucrats, they, they, they take the major decisions and yeah, it happens. Uh, yes, please. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Pratam Shetty from Pompey College, Aikada. I am a BCOM student and I am an NSS volunteer. So, my question to Ratna Prabha ma'am is how to enroll for PM's Chai Pe Charcha? That I have uh, left it to uh, Dr. Bhatt to research <laughs> and find out how to uh, get into that. That's what I read. There, there, there is a, a website from the PMO office regarding yeah, the joint okay. Charcha. You can easily Google it in your right now itself where you can enroll there. Okay, you just given the answer. Yeah. Basically, I found out what are all the programs where the youth can get yes. involved and you can find out how people from this group can get uh, involved into these fellowship programs in Chaipa. The Chaipa Charcha looks uh, very interesting. I yes. think uh, you should get involved. Yes, even, even uh, Dr. Shisha is also having two other uh, uh, you know, fellowship ideas where 
It can also be shared separately to the youngsters, young delegates, wherein after completing your uh, uh, graduations or masters, you can enroll yourself at least for six months or one year for the fellowship. You can get an enriching experience. No, it's out of syllabus. No, field experience you will get certainly. Ma'am has quoted four to five uh, fellowship uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, things yeah. which you can, I hope you made, made note of it. And I also request the organizers to keep some more ideas regarding the fellowships where they can yeah. enroll themselves in the process. I think the best thing is, you know, all the time surfing through the net and all yes. that, finding out. Because when uh, we were the students, everything used to come in the newspaper yes. as an advertisement. Correct. Okay. My mother used to see the advertisement, said, see this advertisement has come, you apply here or there. So now that the advertisement is not coming, I am also finding it difficult to know because I belong to the old school of thought. Now you have to uh, look at uh, this employment news. Earlier for 15 days, when employment news is to come. We used to sit and go through the, all the pages of employment news, wherever jobs are in the apply. Now employment news also is coming online. Yes. Nafri.com is there. Similarly, yes. all these government of India fellowship programs, so many programs are there. They all come on the line. So yes. you need to look at every department's uh, program. Uh, yes. Recently, I met one of my colleagues. Her daughter was working in Baijus because when this girl uh, said she's working in Baijus. So I asked her, how's your daughter? She said, no, now she's gone to Northeast. Uh, she has applied for some fellowship program of uh, Government of India and gone to Northeast. So I was surprised. First of all, I was very fascinated that a girl from Bangalore went off to Northeast. The girls are so bold and good nowadays, active, they've gone. But there are so many fellowship programs which Correct. you should be aware of. Maybe as an NGO, you can get to get the hold of all these programs and uh, float it amongst the volunteers. It will be easy for them. Some person can sit and do all the researching and then you get to know that. And it's really useful that when you do these kind of fellowship programs, you get a certificate, that is one thing. Second thing is you get a lot of experience working with the district administration. You are working with some uh, deputy commissioner or you are working with some police commissioner or working with somebody. It's a wonderful experience for you, yeah. that one year. And that uh, opens your thought for uh, better opportunities. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So as ma'am already mentioned, they can repeat for those who are interested in political aspirations as a policy making, you can check with the IPAC, okay, IPAC is one option. There is a, if you want to work with the district administration, you can go with the PM Rural Development uh, idea. Third one is a Chai Pe Charcha and fourth one is Parliamentary Fellowship where a legislative assist you can uh, uh, enroll yourself and the Niti IO Fellowship is also available, you can check. Just to uh, put it in the Google, you will get so many links regarding that one. And those who are interested in travel and exploring the India, there is a group by Tata, supported by Tata, called Bharat Jodo or Bharat Yatra. Bharat Jodo or Bharat Yatra, they have planned so beautifully that they cover about uh, uh, 10 states, meeting the eminent people, it's not just like a trip. It's a beautiful concept, Bharat Yatra or Bharat Jodo by Tata. You can also search such kind of trips where you can meet uh, youngsters in that journey. So this is a additional information. I also request the organizers uh, to your respective email IDs, they can send the links in the future for your uh, further exploring. Okay. Yeah, I will go with one, one more uh, further question. Yes, please. You can pass one mic this side also because mic is not coming uh, to this side because the <laughs> We can pass one mic to the last, so that we can take one question from this side and another. Please don't mind. Yeah, please. Good morning. Good afternoon, ma'am. I have a question about age restriction of election candidates because government office has an age restriction, but election candidates don't have age restriction. Okay. <laughs> that is why I said you should become a policy maker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you are there in the policy making, you can do it. If you are out of policy making, <laughs> People are sitting there, don't want to legislate. They are already yes. Yes. Recently, our uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, CM resigned because of the age factor. You, know, you might have known it. Forced to resign. Yes. <laughs> yes. Next. Hello, ma'am. Uh, my name is Manjunath and uh, I'm from Belgavi. I'm currently pursuing a chartered day course in Bangalore. Um, I have three questions. Oh, uh, first one is. Youths are uh, distracted with social media things and others. So, how can we overcome those distractions? And the second one is, 
people has lost their faith in politics and the government because we are living in a money making political society so uh, and the, and most of the youths are interested in protests not other than uh, more than uh, politics even if we want to take a part in the politics politics as rajesh sir said they will neglect us because of our, because of our age so how can we change we know that we, can, uh, we have changed the mindset of the people but we don't we don't know to what actions can we bring the awareness to, uh, to the people with each with each and everyone uh, with same thought process to build a nation a great nation and the third one is when it comes to agle avaru helthage chilaga avaru helthage private education andre ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣವನ್ನ ಪಡೆದಿರುವಂತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಉತ್ತರ ಕನ್ನಡ ಉತ್ತರ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನನ್ನ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಉತ್ತರ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಸಿಕ್ತಿಲ್ವಾ ಅಥವಾ ಸಿಕ್ಕರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಓದ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ವಾ Okay, we'll take one question on that. The first one was what social media, media. Social media yeah. distraction. Now, social media distraction is uh, indeed a great uh, <laughs> evil now. It has, it's, it's an evil also. It's also an angel. It uh, gives you a lot of information. And uh, it is something uh, which has uh, become a major distraction, not only for the youth, but it has become a distraction for everybody. it's a and especially in india the craze for social media is immense i don't know how you are going to handle it even if you, uh, you you start with your cook cook is also seeing social media and cooking the lady is sweeping she is also sweeping with one hand and watching uh, videos okay driver is also driving with uh, the yes. mobile in one hand so it's not a problem and all the housewives there are so many jokes that housewife uh, you know does it care for the husband when he comes home she says food is on the table because i am watching some tv serial or uh, i am watching something on the social media now these kind of lot of things are there it's a, it's a distraction for the entire uh, society and we are also observing it that children are uh, getting addicted to it some of them have also gone to the extent of committing suicide watching some uh, games on the social media you know and a uh, lot of uh, people are growing in age very early watching all this things on social media so it's a uh, i think a big uh, problem which our society is uh, facing at present there's no one solution to it now it's left to each one to uh, uh, control his uh, life manage his life because his or her life how much of social media are you going to watch and uh, how much you are going to divide your education and rest of it now a lot of people are saying boys and girls are not going to play games you know they are not going out they are not playing they are not participating and they are just watching tv or they are just watching the, the mobile uh, i can only you know sympathize with everybody but the solution is that each one has to have their own self control you have to have your methods of uh, self control see if parents are very strict and pull out your mobile you are going to rebel yes you are going to find other ways of watching either a either a fight or flight yeah it is a two thing some people have even you know beaten their parents try to attack their yes. parents when this has been done so many incidents have come when the parents have taken away the mobile from the child and the child is having psychological problems yes sometimes uh, there these doctors were saying that uh, many of the new ailments which are coming is that you get up in the morning you open yeah. your facebook account if there are no likes <laughs> what you put the man and woman is getting phobia no yes, yes. liking what i posted yes and they get into depression yes and they need to be treated you can no, it's, so it's popularly called as fomo fear of missing out so missing out <laughs> nobody likes me yes. nobody is saying uh, hello or likes to my pictures and so many frauds on social media mass yes. frauds the yes. boyfriend girlfriend cyber thing. cyber issues recently you have seen that uh, akshay what was that uh, uh, delhi case uh, yes. of the uh, girl's name that bombay girl who, who 
You yes. can't change the whole society. You can't change the whole state. But in some places, Monster. yeah, and Dakshin Kannada is one place where people are educated. Yes. Okay, and you are known to be different in thinking. You are the people who first set up the banks, the banking system, the education, the institutions, etc. They all uh, happen in Dakshin Kannada. So you try, you try to work out. Why do you people work for illiterate people or people who don't work for you? So you try that because Correct. it's very, very difficult. He's also from Belgaum, he told me. It's such a beautiful place. In fact, uh, Belgaum is a place where I did my training. I was a probationer in 1981 in Belgaum. Okay. But in, everywhere, you know, you need to consciously put in some. See, how does anybody become a leader? Okay, let me just uh, go back. How does anybody become a leader? That leader, he would have sacrificed, no? Yes. Unless you sacrifice, how do you remember Mahatma Gandhi or how do you remember Ambedkar or uh, uh, Subhash? The very core is sacrifice. Yeah. They sacrifice. Yes. They sacrifice their comfortable life. Even right. if you see John, you know, he was born to such rich people, such yes. rich parents. Yes. There's no need for him to participate in the freedom struggle and Correct. go to the jail, he was in jail for 10, 15, 20 years. Yes. There's no need. But they had that love for the country. They wanted the country to be free. Now they have given a free country in your hands. Mm. And it is left to you how you change the direction yes. of this country. Yes. Are we going to sit and listen to lectures? Are we going to sit and brood over it? Or are we going to fall into action? Yes. Here there is action. This is called action, you know. This whole NGO is called yes, action. Yes, yes, yes. So you act. 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 So all of you act. It's time to act. It's written here. Yeah. Time to act. Time to act. So my dear friend, what, yeah. uh, what ma'am said in beautifully, it can be put like this, say, uh, think global, act local. At least we can change ourselves at the end. If I may not be changing the whole world, at least I can change myself by doing all these things. It is three or four of you. Okay. Yeah. Three or four of you can get together. Yes. Individually you can't do it. Yes. Three or four or five or six of you get together and say, okay, this area will change. This area of what you feel is bad. Yes. Let us work towards it. Yes. I can see here nearly about 200 to 300 uh, youngsters who are here. But yeah. at least when you are leaving this hall then yeah. by tomorrow, at least you should have at least of 30 new contacts with yourself. Not like uh, my own college, Govinda Sir College, I like Govinda Sir, end up and I will go there, go only three of their own table, finish and going. No, I should get in touch with the Bedala friend. I should touch with the some other area friend. Where that kind of you, you should, that's a connectivity you should uh, build through this uh, wonderful program. That's the you know uh, homework for you at the end of. Uh, tomorrow evening, at least of 30 contacts you should have in your. See, when you are getting, oh, what a matter, dear. Chana matter, I tell, what is it? Phone number, what is it? Daily, or that kind of connectivity you should go. That just will help you to build transformation through connection. So, ma'am, yeah. he asked the last question where he said that uh, in the North Karnataka, the quality of education is not good. But is that the quality of education is bad, or the government is not uh, trying to give a quality education, or the people are not participating in that process? No, I think it is not uh, that the quality of education is uh, not good because the syllabus is the same, you know, the same state syllabus or CBSC or whatever. But the thing is, uh, from uh, from North Karnataka, when you talk, I'm talking dividing it into two. You have Bidar, Gulbarga, Kapala, Rajur, Bellari, this side. Yep. And you also have uh, Belga, Mubli, Darwad, Bagal, Kort, and uh, Bijapur, and uh, Dada, and uh, that kind of yes. thing. So I think Belgaum said, you know, the education is uh, very good. good. Uh, KLD and the And now in the uh, 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 Hyderabad, Karnataka area, which yes. they are calling Kalyan, Karnataka area Kalyan, also, Kalyan. Yes. the education is more or less good. See, ultimately it depends on the student. You have seen, of, seen stories, success stories of so many students who have studied in Kannada media, very yes. bad teachers in those yes. schools, yet they have come out and made in life. Yes. So uh, the government has provided the basic infrastructure and facility for you and it is left for you to uh, take advantage, study on your own and come up in life. Now uh, somebody asked a question about uh, Dakshin Kannada yes. and Urupi being so literate and no, very few in uh, civil services. Yes. But on the contrary, you will see people from
from Belgaum, Hungary, Darwa, Bijapur, Bagalpur, even Peter Gurbarga Raja. Even in the army, we they are putting in the big number. They are putting into the army and force and they are getting yes. more into civil service. Yes. So, in education, sorry, I am the head of the Kalamadilla, Ali Adu, traditionally Adu Hindu in the Baga, compared to Bangalore, Mysore, Bangalore, it is, but it has really developed quite a lot. And uh, comparatively people, because of the backwardness, because of the poverty, people see government service as a very good opportunity. Yes. And that is why many of them get into government service, as he says, UPSC, KAS, Army, and etc. Teachers, the so many teachers come exactly. into the health services, many yes. of them are getting into that. Whereas here, you know, people are more comfortable yes. with education. Uh, so they are not getting so much into the service because other ways of employment. Yes. yes. So I don't think, of course, it ultimately teachers it depends on the quality, you know, local yeah. people. Local, you know, the Mangalore teacher, I mean, I don't know, through percentage, they selected village accountant. So all these Dakshin Kanada and Uthupi people, they were running 95 96 they all came and joined as village accountants in Gurbarga mm. and other things. All very smart, very useful, great people. And on the day of the activity, we want to go back, we want to go back, we want a deputation back to South Canada. Where is the deputation here? Yes. They were moving from MLAs, ministers, taking minutes and wanting to get back. They were, they were informed the government, we should not have this policy because village accounting is the village level. Correct. We should take the local people because they don't want to, they will not want Okay. So it clearly proves, you know, that uh, yeah, people here are really highly educated and qualified, but they are not enterprising. But earlier they were enterprising. All the banks and so on were done by So you need to continue that uh, entrepreneurial skills Correct. which uh, South Canada people have. Mm -hmm. Yes, amazing. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Stand up, yeah. Yes. Please pass mic to her. Bring it to the notice how you can do it. See, there are two things. 
one is uh, from uh, Delhi, the Gram Panchayat now directly gets the funding. Okay. So it is left to the Gram Panchayat when they do their Gram Sabha to see what are the priorities they want to have in that particular year. So now you have to tell them because you found that you said that this year's action plan that is 23-24 which starts in April which is just four months or five months to go they should include this issue in their budget. See what happens in a Gram uh, Sabha or a Gram Panjai the Gram Sabha is done in advance. Okay, now they do the Gram Sabha. They say these are the priorities, all of them decide. And they make the an action plan and they send it to Delhi for approval. Then the funding comes from Delhi directly, some come from the state government. So the priority of the people has to come into the action plan. But in a Gram Gali Yaru, they may call a Gram Sabha, people cannot come. Then they may say, these are the priorities and the Akals for that. So the participation has to be there from the villages, villagers. Yes. So you, you, since you have gone there, you would write a letter to that video saying when I had come, this is what he said, there is no budget, please include it in the next year's action plan. You have to push it. Okay, just don't say it will happen to a lady. You push it. Then he will feel over oh, this lady is persuasive, so let me put it in some action plan. Yeah. What is the second question? The second question was, uh, you know, she has mentioned about Udyup Kakri Vajana to the fellow villagers. Yes, yes, but yes. it is a tedious process that they cannot, uh, you know, participate in the Udyup Kakri. So, uh, your contribution would be to the entire nation. If you could study in that Udyup Kakri Yojana, what are the documents and what are the levels the beneficiary has to go through and why it is cumbersome and what are the levels that can be cut short can be your recommendation. Can you do that? You do the recommendation. See, any time you see any issue, don't uh, say that this is the problem. I'm telling it to the audience. You see how it can be resolved. Okay. I'll just give you an example, sit down, sit down. I'll give you an example. When I was working as a regional commissioner Gulbarga, there is a program called for compassionate appointments. That means if an employee in service dies, his children will be, child will be given a job. So they said that the main surviving member will be giving the job. So I got applications from two kinds of people. Where a mother came and said, I have no faith in my son because he is a drunkard and uh, he will not take care of me. But my daughter is here. If you give the compassionate appointment to my daughter, I am confident that she will take care of me. Other kind of application is when the man had two daughters and he died. And because there is no male member, they are not giving the job. This issue came to me. So what decision I took for them that these people said, Illa Sarkara Adesha Hiti Hari De Ipad Varshan Hiti De Bata Hari De Tanta Unam Kelga De Iro Nala Se Put Up The Lord. Then I said that when the mother has given in writing that she has no faith in the son, what is the use of giving the compassionate appointment? Compassionate appointment is given to the son or the mother so that he looks up to the rest of the family. When the mother is uneducated, she will say either, I mean it goes automatically to the eldest son. So I gave it to the daughter in many cases and then there were two daughters, I gave it to the daughter with the mother's death. The fellows in my office, in my clerks and all that, Sharad class and all said, son will look after the family, that is why it was decided to give to the family, then the daughter will get married and go away. Okay. So I put my logic, there is the guarantee that the son after marriage will look after the mother and daughter after marriage will not look after the mother. Okay, where is the guarantee? Uh, there is no guarantee who will look after. So if the mother says it should be given to my daughter, it should be given and if there is no son in the family, we can't deprive the family because they don't have a son, you should give to the daughter. I gave almost 200 people that kind of a job in the entire Gurbarga division. So when I came as chief secretary, again I was uh, flooded with requests from many of these ladies like this saying that we have no son and we are not getting the job and my daughters are well called.
qualified or my son doesn't take care of us, I don't want the son to be. So I, you know, took a conscious decision and gave the jobs to the daughters with the hope that they will look after the mother. After a long time, after I left, and my successors uh, started rejecting the application of the girl child. Then one of the girl child went to the high court and Karnataka High Court passed an order that the girl uh, or the boy should be given the job. Then government started implementing it. So I was saying, why should we go, go to the courts to show us the common sense uh, route? So in other words, if there is an issue before you, and if you say, I can't do anything about it, nobody can do anything about it. Correct. Because the people look at us for a solution. They have expectations from us. And if I can, if I say I am helpless as a deputy commissioner or a divisional commissioner or a chief secretary, I tell people who come to meet me, I tell them I am helpless, then where will they go and who will they go and what is the fate they will have in administration. Correct. So every problem you face and every government order is passed, which is passed with good in intentions, the intention was good at that point of time, 30 years back, when only the boy looked after his parents. Now his girls also look after their parents with equal uh, love and affection. Days have changed, so we need to change the government orders. So we need to look at the uh, problem and we need to find a solution for every problem. If we keep saying that there is a problem and I cannot solve it, then nobody will solve it. Somebody has to bear the cat. Similarly, all of you, when you go somewhere, you see some problem and you feel that is not right and you have a solution before you because you are the sufferer, you can give the answer to the problem. Madam, we will come to our final aspect, final question. Uh, just a quick, uh, it's not like a rapid fire and all. Just a quick uh, response, a simultaneous, spontaneous response from your end. Please can take up my uh, mic, madam. Uh, so, you are motivating personality. Who is your motivation? The <laughs> <laughs> excellent want to know, yes. No, but I, uh, I don't have anybody as one person who is a motivation, but it was, of course, my, I, I give 100% marks to my parents okay. for motivating me to join the service yes. and do well in service. And as a lady officer, I think my parents never told me that any posting or any job I did is difficult. They would tell me to do whatever I got and they said they would come and support me which is very, very important because sometimes we get a lot of lady officers calling up saying I have an old uh, in-law staying with me or I have a child uh, who is very small, can I get this kind of a posting, uh, lighter posting or something like that. But I never went with that kind of uh, issue before the government because whenever government posted with me, I went and the parents said you go and they supported. I think they have been the major motivational part in the first part of my life, then later on my husband and my kids, uh, they also sort of adjusted to my life, okay. rather than me adjusting to them. <laughs> okay. That's a very, you know, encouraging uh, word from there. Uh, Madam, uh, your favourite book you want to suggest to the youngsters or uh, your favourite, you know, uh, article or maybe a person whom you read frequently, which the youngsters need to know. Yeah, there is nothing I favourite, but I really like to read about life of people. Mm. You know, I have more than fictions and stories and all that. I like to read from the life of uh, people, different people. And uh, of course, among their kids and all that, we read the life of Mahatma uh, uh, Gandhi, how he came, I know, how he went into the freedom struggle or Jawaharlal Nehru or Sarojini Naidu. So I kept reading the lives of uh, people because when you read a life of the people, you come to know the various issues in their life because when it's 300 and 400 pages, you come to know the kind of obstacles they face and how they overcome it. And off late, you know, I read a lot of, uh, I see a lot of interviews of people on the uh, Facebook or on the social media. Like he said, uh, <laughs> social media is, uh, the, uh, of course, I'm not but I do see that when I am free. You are not addicted but updated. Updated. <laughs> <laughs> With the lives of people. Yes. Because I, mean, I, I really like to read, uh, see 
especially women, how they have overcome several issues. There's nothing like one favorite. Different people, you know, they have. Everyone has a story to tell. And I leave their life and then I feel happy. Yes, how tough their life has been, how they have overcome. Or sometimes I think, okay, I didn't have this kind of problem. Okay. They are so much better, you know, than me. They have really had a real tough time. So that way I keep updating myself and I also keep learning. They see, life is a continuous process of learning. I would like to tell everyone, the life is a continuous process of learning. This is what was told by a director in the Basuri Academy. Never think that you got into IS, that's what you know everything, you, are, you don't have to learn anything. That should not be the attitude. Life is a continuous process of learning. And till your last breath, even on, when you are on the death bed, you will learn something. Because when you are dying, you come to know how many people love you and how many people are after your property, how many people are artificially trying to be close to you. So on the, till the last breath, you learn. So that is what we have to keep our eyes and ears open, open for learning. We have to continually see learn. And even a small person, he may be even a beggar or an attender or anybody, when he tells something about his life, it's a learning thing. So we need to continuously see learn. So From others, keep our ears and eyes open and listen to people. That I think is, uh, you learn a lot. I'll take five more minutes to end this session. Uh -huh. uh, I was, when I was, uh, Watching the TED talk by ma'am, she mentioned a beautiful uh, story, so touched me also, uh, where she was a very young officer, dated back to uh, 1980-1985. She visited to Chikmanglu. Chikmanglu was working in Chikmanglu. Yes, she was working in Chikmanglu. Chikmanglu was working in Chikmanglu. She 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 was working in Chikmanglu. Uh, madam, you are new officer. I did approve of now the lady of Madam and our Morta is Sayabragi. Banda Gandas Relarusa Gandas Rigay Madare. Hengusura Aspe and Gandas Rigay Madara, but you got such an amazing opportunity to do something for women. Okay? So please do something for women and Manta and Sandesha. It transformed Madam's thought process. And from that day to till today, she comes, uh, served as a, a chief secretary and to the skill development in charge. So she's a champion of women entrepreneur, and uh, and she has an amazing uh, institution called Ubuntu, uh, where that's a platform for women entrepreneurs. And my dear uh, young sisters who are sitting over here, I request you to connect with Madam with, uh, with with reference to the Ubuntu platform. I request Madam to give little uh, thoughts on Ubuntu uh, for two to three minutes, and thereby we end up the session. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, um, when I was, that's what he told me, that that was uh, really amazing. Uh, in 85, 86, that was my second posting. And this uh, teacher, who was also Gram Panchayat, uh, some member uh, called Tashaka, from a village called Giriyapur in Chikmangalore. He came to me and uh, he did tell me this, that men come and they work for men and go, and women come, they also work for men and go. So who will work for the women? So if God has given you an opportunity to get into service and you should work for women. I think I still remember him. I connected with him the other day because of thanks to Zoom technology, one of his students came because he mentioned about me to a student. And I later on I realized that he apparently is a very big uh, agriculture expert. And they made a film on him. And, uh, in his talk, he mentioned about me, so which was a big certificate for me that after 35 years, you know, I had worked there for one year and he remembered me. So, he said, I am going to go to the school. Then his student came and he said, uh, making a film on my teacher and he interviewed me. And this is what I told that he changed my life because otherwise I would have been also like any normal DC working in the district and going away, not working specifically for women if he had not uh, told me. Then I connected with him through Zoom call. He's become old now, he's 80 plus, and both of us exchanged pleasantries. So it was a wonderful meeting thanks to Zoom. Similarly, many of the Devdasis also, they've all become very old in Rancho Kopala. One of the NGOs connected me with them through the Zoom. So just spending this out of, little out of context. But thanks to the technology, you know, you can connect to people whom you serve. 
So when I was in industries and commerce, as I told you, when we brought about this uh, industrial uh, policy was coming out, I realized that there was nothing for women in the policy. And I felt that we should have a separate chapter for women. Then uh, I took some ideas from various states, like Andhra, Telangana, Maharashtra, who were more developed as far as women entrepreneurs are concerned. So they had these various industrial parks in, uh, for exclusively for women. So Mysore, Bangalore, Hubli, Dharma, Gulbarga, Bangalore also I went and saw the land there and uh, we wanted to have industrial parks, separate incentives for women, more concessions, more subsidies and all that and we made a policy. So when I made the policy again, as I mentioned, top down or bottom down, I said, okay, this is what I am thinking. Let me talk to women entrepreneurs. So I asked my office whether there is a women entrepreneurs association. They said, yeah, there are uh, three, four associations in Bangalore. I called all the women entrepreneurs associations and told them, this is what I am thinking of doing for you. They were very happy and they also gave in their suggestions, how the incentives have to be, how the, and then we modified whatever they gave ideas and we brought out the industrial policy. That is how I came in contact with the women entrepreneurs and the association. Then came in, then I told all the women associations, they were independently doing events. Somebody does, uh, had the 200, somebody had 300. So uh, when we were doing the small events, I said, why do you want to do it? Why don't we bring all the associations together and do one event? We had 1,000 people. So initially, the resident, and then I said, come, let's do it. And all the women associations came together. And when we called the chief minister, he saw so many women. He said, he should have been there, uh, minor of business, Martha Karnataka. He said, it was only a sample because only 1,000. There are so many. And that's how you know, the government also started appreciating what we are doing. And then we had the Invest Karnataka, just like we had the Global Investors Meet. It was uh, called, Congress government, it was called Global Glo Investors Meet. Here it's called you know, BJP Global, uh, in Global Investors Meet. Then we had uh, various think big worlds, uh, in Asia's largest women entrepreneurs meet. And for this, you know, we started a WhatsApp group put all the presidents of various associations and brought them on one group. Then that's how all the women came together. And once the Invest Karnataka was over, somebody suggested, uh, why are we calling this WhatsApp uh, group IK 2015 because it is over. Why don't we give it a new name? And one of the members suggested, why don't we call it Ubuntu? Then we all Googled and then she put a small uh, picture of Ubuntu. And um, it is, uh, of course, an African uh, philosophy. It is uh, a very simple philosophy which says, how can I be happy if you are not happy? And I am because you are, okay? I cannot live alone if all of you are not there. My happiness lies being with you and in with your happiness. So I think uh, it is a, just basically a feeling of loving, giving and sharing and enjoying each one's happiness and success. So we thought this would be a very good uh, philosophy and we changed the uh, WhatsApp group Ubuntu. To, to Ubuntu. And uh, then when we Googled Ubuntu is also a Linux software. So uh, they got confused with that. Then we changed it to a consortium because it's a consortium of women entrepreneurs association. So after I retired, all the women entrepreneurs associations uh, told me that you can't just be like this and go. This group has been very active. So I also was very attached to these people and I enjoyed working with the women entrepreneurs. So we registered this as an NGO, as an Ubuntu consortium in 2019. And we have now 34 associations across nine states in India with 21,000 members. And uh, we have uh, broken the myth that women cannot get along together. Generally men joke, you know, one woman doesn't like the other woman or the women don't get along together. So, so many women associations have come together. We help the women entrepreneurs to grow in business, help them to have exhibitions, market their products, network their products, train them in digital marketing, to open their own websites, to do online business, 
and several things, whatever you know, uh, suggestions come from the women entrepreneurs, we do it. So now I am also heading an NGO, like uh, doctors having an NGO. So I uh, request him to share, join hands with us and work for uh, women entrepreneurs in this area. Uh, yes, thank you so much. My dear friend, this is all about uh, I am because of you and you because of me. me. That's it, okay? So, this is what the very theme of the session is addressing about inclusion of the uh, youths in the policy. Policy is for all of us for the overall sustainable development and uh, it is our responsibility to implement it and to participate in it. As ma'am rightly said, we have to change our mindset to transform the India at last. So thank you so much for being present over here. This is the event beautifully for about 1 hour 30 minutes, nearly 45 minutes. We didn't know that, just like check the clock. Thank you so much for your patience, Karen, and the participation. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks to all the participants and the organizers. That was really an amazing interaction. Uh, so thank you, thank you ma'am for helping us pictureize the practical and present scenario of the society and make us believe in ourselves with your life lessons. So the very, uh, I could say the heart touching words that I could uh, grab from this interaction was that the sympathy can be easily gained but jealousy needs to be earned. And also the the, the, the punching word, I could say, the punching line from her uh, Ubuntu uh, organization is that if you are not happy, how can I be? So this itself shows uh, how selfless she is and how selfless she is in her implementation of the ideas. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for being part of this event, uh, like agreeing to our invitation. Uh, I would request our uh, Dr. Shisha Bhatt, Managing Director of Akanksha Charitable Trust, to to present it open of love to Srimati Ratna Pratha Ma. Uh, to know more about Madam and to reach Madam, you can check www.ratnaprabha.in. Okay. So it's easy to reach Madam. You get the email ID also. Ah, uh, go to consulting also, you can check. Okay, Madam, there is a link is provided. Please check. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. and uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to interact with the students. I hope that you have all benefited by this uh, talk and interaction. And even if one of you, you know, have been touched and have changed in your life, we'll be very, very happy that, uh, you know, this interaction has been fruitful and beneficial. For me also, sharing my thoughts, we never get an opportunity to talk about our life journey. So when we have this kind of, uh, <laughs> what you call, chai ke cha cha, I can say, so I also got uh, opportunity to go back uh, down the middle lane and it was great being here. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, we all were benefited by your valuable words. Now I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ranjan Mellarpadi uh, for wonderfully moderating the session, being a strong bridge between the delegates and the guests. Thank you, sir. I would like to request uh, Dr. Shisha Bhatt to present to Maminta Pula on behalf of Akasha Charitable Trust. Thank you. Thank you again uh, for this wonderful interactive session and thank you delegates for being so interactive and, and being the part of this interaction along with the guests. Thank you.
uh, distance as a person like uh, by sitting with your team members. So are you all sitting with your team or are you sitting with your friends? Yeah, now I want you all to get up and uh, combine maybe three tables together and sit as a team. Okay? Is that fine? I want team number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to sit here and other teams to sit here. I want you to talk to each other and uh, discuss about what you are going to do. So I am going to quickly go there and uh, for the picture and I will come back. If any of you have not been allotted to the team, please wait for a while. I will just come back and let you know. So others who have uh, already been into the group and uh, who have discussed through online, you can just go meet your friends and uh, sit together. Is it fine? Okay. So you don't know what are like who are your team members? Yeah, team number one can come here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, you all have to get to know each other and find your teams. That is the task. Okay. 
Nitya Prasad, then Aisha. Am I pronouncing your names right? It is okay. Nandan. Can someone know what they Team number four. Yes, team number five, Madhusudan, Glenn, Jocelyn, Pritika, Suhas, Jeevan, Krishnisha, Joshna, Dijo, Chetan, Vikya, Joshita, Charvaraj. Where is team number five? Yes, all here again. Who is that? What's your name? Vishita, Jitesh, 
sustainable civic center projects. Yes, thank you. Team number 12. We have taken the topic of zero number. Yes, team number 12, zero number 13. Team number 13, uh, SDG 3, good health and well being. Yes, thank you. 14. We have opted quality education. Yes, quality education. Team number 14, right? Uh, last week, team number 15. We are team number 15, we chose gender equality. Yes, thank you. So, uh, my memory is not that good that I can remember all the team names and your topics. So, I want you to do one thing. I want you to someone uh, to open the WhatsApp group and add your topic in the description. So, that way. Okay? Is that fine? Quickly, I want you to open the WhatsApp and change the description into the topic you have chosen. So, thank you. I just wanted to know uh, that uh, what is
Loki traveler and business enthusiast who constantly trying to upskill himself in entrepreneurship and diverse set of realms with the help of bright minds and unique group personalities. It's an honor to have you with us today. Now stage is open to you.
have admitted their students to uh, reopen their colleges and admitted them into their campus, my college restricted me. No, you shouldn't come. Maybe the first year and second year students can come and uh, enjoy your campus life. So I've been missed out of COVID inflected three years of my college life. Maybe max to max I would have gone to the campus uh, maximum of 100 days. I'm being so so generous of the amount. But maybe I would have made it for 10 weeks I guess. So 70 days in total. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, experienced the campus life much. But uh, many people here are uh, experiencing their own college campus life. And I wish you all to make uh, the maximum out of it. Please don't just study, also have some fun. And along the way, uh, give something to the community that you have. Uh, be it this conference and everything that you are uh, going to explore. Please give something back to the community that you have taken from. So that's the only thing that can distinguish you from other uh, members. And uh, Yes, so in that meantime of three years, I was binge watching all the TV and film series that I could get my eyes on to. So you name any series, uh, whoever knows uh, Breaking Bad here. Breaking Bad. Make some noise guys. Okay, who all knows Friends? Make some noise. Okay, okay, who all knows uh, Piggy Blackers? This group has to make more noise because this is a notorious group. Make some noise, even more noise. Would Thomas Shelby approve of it? Make some more noise. Yeah, yeah, tribute to Thomas Shelby. Yes. So, uh, what I basically did is I uh, binge watched all the film and TV series and everything. I hung up with all the deadbeats just like me. I went out on night outs and everything. The life was so agnostic. I didn't, I didn't give, I didn't provide any value to my peers or or the community in general. I was just a hedonistic uh, creature who was just uh, making fun out of everything and getting pleasure out of everything. And uh, three years has been like that. And then now, right now, I'm here standing at this stage uh, in front of 100 plus delegates all over from the country and most of them from uh, Mangalore and uh, I am intrigued by the language Kannada and Tulu when, uh, when I was uh, speaking to my uh, teammates then only I came to know that in Karnataka they don't only speak of Kannada they also speak of Tulu and when I heard Tulu I remembered about Anushka Shetty because of her gorgeousness so this is how I am unaware of the languages that have been spoken so uh, uh, a general tip to you all guys, you have to explore many places as possible. You have to travel, you have to go to different places, connect with the cultural people over there and gain real world experiences which will make you stand out from the corporate world and everything blah 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 everything. Okay? So, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Srisha Bhatsha, uh, sir had uh, texted me on WhatsApp asking my uh, approval of uh, speaking at this event, he, he offered me a position of speaker to speak about the role of youth in governance. So, uh, unlike every other assignment and project that I outsourced to my peers, that I bribed them with chocolates, chips and everything that I could and get the desired outputs from them, uh, just go and submit it. That was my uh, my character from, uh, from initially. But today, I decided to write the speech on my own. And the very, very best thing about it is, I started only this morning. Just like we all study for our exams just before the day of exam, right? Uh, is everybody active? Make some noise. Make some noise, even more noise. Thomas Shelby. Yes, yes, yes. If at all you guys are making some noises and this, is, this goes on like an interactive session, you all will also enjoy. So uh, that's, that's the main mode of my speech. I know I'm not a good speaker, I know it for sure, but you are good listeners. And if at all you are not good listeners, please cultivate that habit of listening well, because it will more good to you than the speaker itself. So be good listeners. Okay, uh, now coming back to it, uh, I thought of one thing. So okay, I have chosen to write a speech of myself and I have been late on it also. I started today morning only. What am I going to do? That's something worthwhile, that, that which something can provide value to all the delegates. So I thought, 
regardless of choosing some things to do, when to do. Choosing a thing to do is the most important factor that will be uh, affecting our 80% of the results. So instead of thinking about what you should do and when you should do, just think about one thing that you, you should do for sure, of a definitive thing that you should do. And that will benefit you to a great extent. So that's what I also did. So I, as every 20, 20 year, 20 -ish year olds will do, I checked out my out from my hotel because I didn't get anything in my flow state in my hotel. So I went to a cafe. I sat down and ordered a coffee, and then I entered into my flow state. Ideas began rushing in. I didn't even think that I can think of these many things when I am sitting at the cafe. So I did that. Yeah, I got various insights and realizations about governance. So one thing I'd like to share is. Initially, I struggled to even start with the introduction part. All these things that I am talking now is introduction. So I was struggling to even get this amount of speech into my paper, write it down. So what I did after this, I, uh, yes, mm. yeah, I am messing it up, I know that, yeah. Please make some noise. Yes, uh, even more. Yeah, this is how this is how I can identify uh, hide my messing ups. Okay. Okay. Yes, I thought what is governance in general. So before knowing of the role of the youth in governance, we should know clearly know what governance is. So uh, I thought of various other aspects, but I couldn't come into a concrete conclusion of my own opinion, my own perspective. So. I went down simple terms. I uh, stayed on the simple lines. So I decided, I mean, I concluded that governance is something that makes things to do easier with a system and that can generate a maximum number of efficient results, not just of effective results, but efficient. More things done in less resources and in less time. That is what governance stands for. Governance is a system that generates values and that generates results, the desired outputs, not just in an effective manner, but in an efficient manner. So, uh, I, I thought of many things and uh, suddenly I was struck in something. So, that is the fact that I am able to think all these things. Why am I able to think all these things? I have tried to think about the governance. Uh, just like that, I couldn't come up with any ideas, but as soon as I got my paper and pen in hand and I started to uh, write my words in a sheet of paper, I, I entered my flow state and uh, began to think uh, in, in an even extraordinary terms. Because that is the power of articulation. You all guys should cultivate the power of articulation. Articulation is nothing but the way of making a uh, few statements or your opinions into paper, into some communicable form. That is called as articulation. Everybody should learn how to write and communicate better so that nearly 80% of your tasks will be done that way efficiently. Even in engineering and mechanical uh, sectors, okay. even in uh, engineering and mechanical sectors, the importance of communication is very, very underrated. So, uh, regardless of what course you are choosing, choosing, you should also develop communication skills. That would uh, benefit you to a great extent. Okay, now digging deep into governance, uh, arises a question, what will be the role of youth in governance when there is an abundant number of all these dignitaries and all those experienced people? They are already there. What will be the role of us? So, here comes the problem. Already there is a system of solutions or, or else there is a system to conduct ourselves in a manner that will generate a maximum uh, resource. What we can do is we can fit into those systems. But not just fitting in, we can also lead a group of people, be it a community, be it a, a your own club, anything. Youth has to lead a group of people so that they will develop leadership skills. And in turn, they will become uh, like dignitaries in the future. 
So it will be a very long process. Nobody can accept overnight results uh, in this very long process. So that will be it. And uh, okay, uh, apart from that, we can derive inspiration from them and surround ourselves with sufficient motivation, and we will automatically do better. Uh, with that being said, governance can be taken as an objective. Okay, we can take this as an objective that good governance has to be in place. But in nature, government governance is a subjective nature. That is, it differs from one person to person. The way of governing things will differ from one person to person. Uh, for example, I would uh, think of a way that is more efficient and somebody else will think of a way that is more effective. So the way of governing things will differ. But the, uh, uh, that should not arise any cat catastrophe, right? So that there has to be a common purpose and that common purpose is split into 17 goals and those are, those are the goals you are uh, seeing uh, on the screen uh, and you, also, uh, you guys also chose from it. So these 17 goals are common goals that have been uh, framed by the United Nations with a deadline of uh, 2030. So we'll be focusing on that only. So uh, I'm talking about the uh, role of youth in governance in general. So you, my tip for you all guys would be to become self-aware and sustainable individually. So that when you have a hold of your individuality, you will you'll be uh, able to empathize with others and even with the groups, but only when you understand yourself even more. So, uh, become self-aware and sustainable and also build a diverse set of helpful skills like communication, like networking, all these skills are underrated, but you guys have to uh, build yourself on that. And then, cultivate a mindset of providing to the community. You are taking many things out of the community that you are in, be it your college, you are using a library and all those stuff. Uh, please uh, cultivate a mindset of providing to the community and govern your own individuality to make yourselves worthy of the position of governing a larger system. Yeah. If at all these things seem difficult to you, I was an agonistic person and I in a span of five months, I in a span of five months uh, influenced over 2,000 people, hosted over 20 plus events and uh, conducted screening and orientation programs and has been uh, offered a position of speaker at the National Youth Conference. If at all I can do it in the short term, why can't you all guys? So a great leader is born by governing himself well. So uh, thank you, thank you for uh, this wonderful opportunity and all the best for you all guys to make the best of the world of this conference. Thank you so much. Once again, uh, make noise for Thomas Shelby. Thank you so much, MRT. Now, I would like to call upon Harishma Santoshini K. So, Harishma Santoshini K is a 25-year-old value-driven individual with an eye towards better understanding of the world dynamics and a desire to comprehend diverse cultures. She is currently pursuing her MA in International Relations from Annamalai University. She also has a bachelor degree in engineering from Sri Krishna College of Technology, Coimbatore. In 2021, she was crowned with the Real Hero Award for outstanding service during COVID-19 from Jai Hind Foundation and Youth Foundation. She topped the college during her engineering and bank academic excellence award from her institution. In 2017, she has received Women Achiever Award from Accenture. Ms. Harishma has participated in a number of national and international conferences including International Essay Contest, GOI Peace pa Foundation Tokyo, COVID-19 Operational Planning Guidelines Supporting Country Preparedness and Response, WHO and Health Emergencies Program and Smart India Hackathon 2017. Apart from these, she is actively volunteering to an NGO called Youth Foundation Coimbatore. We are so happy to have you with us today, Ms. Harishma. Now, stage is open to you. Hello, all. I think I'm audible, right? Yes. Yeah. So, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you gave such a wonderful introduction. And thank you, Madhu. Your talk was very funny, and it took me back to my 
my college days, I guess. So, basically, I believe that we all have something to learn from someone. We, we may share the same degree or same goals in life, but never the same life. Right? You agree? I need some noise too, like how you did to the other guy. <laughs> Okay, so now let me start with a quote, you know, there is a Roman uh, quote by Roman poet that says the greatest wealth is health. You all agree, right? So true to that, the necessity to ensure a great health and well-being is a sustainable development goal to be achieved by 2030. So we have our SDG 3 that is good health and well-being and it concentrates to promote mental health being mental health well-being too. You have, have you read about it? No. No. So we have ta sub-targets within our goals. So SDG 3.4 aims to specifically reduce mortality from non-communicable non diseases and to promote mental health. So now here we need to understand that mental health and physical health are two equally important components of overall health. Okay, for example, uh, you all know depression increases the risk of physical health conditions like heart diseases, stroke or even diabetes. The same way the vice versa happens too. When we have chronic medical conditions, we may be vulnerable to some mental health disturbances that can start from depression. So please answer me, why are we talking about mental health now? Why is it so important? Any one answer, even a word? Why is mental health important? Please don't sit as if like we are talking something out of topic. It is, it comes under SDG 2. I mean SDG, T, O, O, O. Okay, SDG. Please, someone is raising the hand, I suppose. Yes. Willing to answer? Yes, why are we talking about mental health? Why is it so important? Your views, please. Uh, because according to me, uh, during COVID, many of us were forced into lockdown uh, for our own safety and the safety of society. And many of us had to go online. And this had a severe effect on the overall mental well-being of many uh, young people all over the world. And due to that, this problem that always existed in human society uh, since millennia so, uh, has surfaced in a very hard way in recent years. And that is why everyone is now speaking about it. Yes. So, mental health has always been significant, but it wasn't in last some two to three years, right? So, I say mental health includes our emotional, psychological and social well-being, no? It affects how we think, how we feel, how we talk, or how we relate ourselves to others. It also plays a vital role in our decision making. We make healthy choices. So, mental health is very important in all stages of life, from childhood and adolescence through adulthood. But what causes mental illness? So COVID has been a reason, a general reason nowadays. But what really causes mental illness other than COVID? Please don't consider the word mental illness as something that shouldn't be talked about or it is a taboo. It is not at all a taboo. Okay? So what causes mental illness? We lead highly stressful lives. Right? We have deadlines at work. We have uh, we experience reading relationships. Uh, nothing to say about it and we have social and social media society and social media pressure and we work for long hours we experience economic hardships everything contributes to mental disturbances in some way or the other even experiencing a chronic medical condition you know what is a chronic medical condition that is something that lasts for more than a year but affects our daily life that is chronic medical condition and some imbalances in the brain, some biological factors and uh, the feel, most importantly the feeling of loneliness and isolation are important cause of mental illness. So given the causes, let's talk about the impact. The impacts are very profound. Okay? It disturbs our educational outcome. As students, uh, our educational outcome is disturbed, our productivity at work is disturbed. 
the on the versus side nearly 800 million people kill themselves every year due to some form of mental illness it's 800000 people every year over 300 million people suffer from depression all over the world it might be very near to some countries whole population okay over 300 million people are affected by depression and many many more millions by uh, anxiety disorders with a large chunk in india also we experience uh, nearly 55 million people experiences dementia as a mental condition and nevertheless to say bipolar disorder exists under this heading too okay so it's very important to talk about mental health because now not the covid but mental health issues are the silent pandemic killing people social stigma now we are, we, are, we are all afraid of society so the social stigma comes into this place so social stigma and uh, the discrimination can add to the suffering and disability associated with treating mental illness or issues this can make people or motivate them to take bad decisions Right? You agree with me? Many people take bad decisions just because of oh, I'm afraid of how the society will treat me or how will I get married or who will be friends with me. This is the reason people uh, kill themselves in many ways. But we can find it. We can find these people and we can stop them from hurting themselves. You agree, right? I'm talking sense. Right? Okay. So, so we, sh uh, we are talking about mental illness, but have you heard of some people saying, no beta, no pity, there is no such thing called depression. Huh? Oh, I see many smiling faces there. <laughs> okay, okay, they say that there is no such thing called uh, depression, no such thing called mental illness. It is just a choice. Either you choose to be happy or you, or you choose to be sad. Okay, if you are a stronger individual, no, you will not have that condition. So this is what many people say, even in our families and close relatives. Okay, they associate mental illness with some kind of weakness. Do you think that is right? No. no. What do you think? What's your opinion on it? We have? Yeah. So mental health is never a condition, it is nothing, it has nothing to do with being weak or lacking willpower. Okay? They say uh, 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 it's just because of hormonal changes in adults. But that's absolutely not true. Nearly 14% of adolescent population in the world, they experience depression. Okay, nearly 14% of adolescent population in the whole world, they experience depression. So this is not an easy matter at all. So basically this attitude of the society doesn't help, right? It only adds to the difficulty in addressing the issue. So when, when people start judging you, will you come out and talk about it? No, you will remain silent, you will hurt yourself and that's it. End of story. We need people to stop doing this judgment, right? We, uh, people nowadays, they also say that there, is, there was no thing called mental illness when we were teenagers or when we were adolescents. No, no, that's not at all true. Actually, this topic of mental health awareness, it's been 30, I mean, it's been 30 years since it was first talked about. Okay, the world's first mental health awareness day was celebrated on October 10, 1992. Okay, it's, it's been 30 years and the theme for this year's mental health awareness is to make mental health and well-being for all a global priority but still we are just trying to talk about it. No steps taken. We still, uh, people are killing themselves, nobody is willing to even talk about it. So one way to address this issue is to just have conversations about mental health. Like how we talk about our, even our Netflix uh, series, we our series, we watching our series, we watching movies, or how we talk about our relationships with our friends. Just make it a norm to talk about mental health too. Okay, talk about it in your workplace, in your work associations, uh, in TVs, radios, and even at home. Even at home. Okay. So uh, on this note, on October 10, no, our government of India rolled out, uh, government of India uh, rolled out an initiative called Telemanas, and I just want you to all check what this Telemanas is about and share the word 
with all your friends. Telly marks. Okay, please take care about it and know about it. So you may know why is she suddenly talking about mental health. It's easy for everyone to talk about mental health, right? No, but that's not the case with me. All these may sound so simple, but it takes real courage and patience to go through the toughest phases of life, and I have been one among that person too. Okay? So uh, can you imagine lying around in bed all day, being unable to do nothing? Being unable to do nothing, not able to sit or stand for even five minutes straight. No, it may sound relaxing, but it was not. It was the toughest five years of my life. It was just a simple accident and my life changed. So continuous medication, being in bed for all day, I nearly forgot how life would like to be painless because my life was full of pain, just chronic pain. But I endured it all. I never felt prey to it. And thanks to all those wonderful souls who helped me to overcome that. Okay. So friends, I request you all to take the maiden step to just by start understanding people nearby you. Okay. Be aware of what is going on through their mind. Be aware of what is mental health. And try to understand each other better to break the stigma. See, this is a serious public issue that needs to be addressed. But you know, it can be prevented by low-cost interventions, right? Having a, con con uh, having a conversation doesn't cost a penny, right? You, you agree, you agree. Having a conversation doesn't cost anything, it's free. So it is not at all a taboo and let us make the first step by just starting the conversation. So we have been talking about the society, but how do we take care of ourselves? So how to take care of our own mental health? So as an individual, we need to prioritize ourselves first, okay? We need to prioritize ourselves and take care of ourselves, show, uh, show some respect and kindness to ourselves first. We need to learn to deal with stress, not to fall prey to it, okay? Your social, make sure your social circle motivates you. Having some me, me time, having some me time, time for yourself, your hobbies, it is not at all selfish. Please understand it, okay? We all have goals, we all have been planning, and myself too. Now of mine, it's your life, it's not gonna run away. You need to take care of yourselves first, so mean so you must be healthy to win the race, right? And uh, uh, most importantly, we need to take some uh, time to process everything that is going on in our life. We shouldn't take decisions just in a, in a fraction of a second, emotionally driven. No, those decisions are very, they are, they are, they are very faulty. They may be very faulty at most times. Please understand it. Please take time to process everything that goes on in your life. Okay? We should aim high. That is, that's true. That's really great. We should aim high. But we should also be ready to embrace failures. Okay? We should be ready to embrace failures when it comes because they make us feel most alive, I believe, right? So now I have my final question. Let me ask you, I need to hear the answer from you loudly. How are you? Fine. Fine, that's great, that's very good. But please understand, it's human to not be all right all the time. If you're not fine, you just don't have to say you're fine. It's all right to not be okay. Please know that, okay? Everything has a solution. The problem begins only when we hide it. Okay, not only this, everything. The problem begins only when we hide it. It's essential we talk about it. Just know your life is more precious than you will ever know. Right? You agree, right? Our life is very precious. We have our own life. It's not to get hurt. So in, in today's world where everything is getting more complicated, the best solutions are sometimes the most simplest ones. So let's start by having conversations. Okay? Let's think about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Harishma, for sharing your thoughts. Now I would like to call Rishita Satla. So before handing over the stage to her, I would like to give a brief introduction about her. Rishita Satla is currently but pursuing her BE in computer science. She was a part of United Nations Environment Program as 28th Regional Ambassador of India. 
She has won Queen's Commonwealth Essay Competition, which is world's oldest essay writing competition organized by Royal Commonwealth Society, United Kingdom. Rushita has also held many leadership positions in her college public speaking club and involved in volunteering activities like IRSC, etc. We are so happy to have you today with us. Stage is open to you. Men to work, and the other hand, 
we have to bring more and more robots to our industry. We are the only generation that will have to fight that will have to fight against rising of intolerance as well as rising of sea levels. We have to detoxify the air that we breathe in and the conversations that we have. We are the first generation that will have to move both inwards and outwards as individuals, as citizens and as nations. So today I did not come here to introduce you all to a global leadership crisis and how our politicians are failing to serve our nation. But I came here to introduce you to a global opportunity and you know what that opportunity is? The next Prime Minister of this country is in a classroom today. Do you all agree or not? And we can change the way that we run this country and we see this world by educating that one child right. If I to if I've told you that you are a teacher, imagine yourself being a teacher for next few minutes. A teacher for a classroom of 40 students, each coming from a different background, each known for something or the other, a bad excuse or a good joke, a melodious voice or a meritorious work. And if I walked in and told you that the next Prime Minister is in your classroom today, would you react any differently? Would you look around at least one time to hear the words that are unsaid, the dreams unnoticed and the actions that you never thought existed in that classroom? Would you look for that dream in every eye and hope in every heart? One more time. I'm not making this up. This, this is true because the next Prime Minister of this country is already in a classroom today. For the world that is becoming extremely complex, we'll have to teach ourselves to be the next generation leaders. For this, I envision four key values and two four key skills and two core values. Those four key skills are critical thinking, research, communication and leadership. And those two core values are empathy and fearlessness. So let's get started. Let's get started by bringing in the first two into our classrooms, which is critical thinking and research. For a nation that wonders very often that will be continue engaging in a politics of right versus left or a politics of right versus wrong. Will we choose our politics of fear or politics of hope? Will we continue to see people as numbers and percentages or will we continue to see people as individuals and as people with unique stories and unique backgrounds? In order to decide that, let us bring that the, bring the first lesson of research and critical thinking into ourselves. Let us begin by putting ourselves into situations. Let us go back to uh, say 1991 or 1984. Let us go back to 1947 or 1985. Let us be in a situation, be it an opening of an economy or closing of a dam or be it uh, or be it an amendment to the constitution or a group of people protesting together to get something done. Put yourselves in situations. Uh, for example, uh, let's get started with opening of the economy. Be the, prime, be the finance minister for one day and I ask you to write two notes. First note, as the finance minister of this country, what all can go right if, if our country is open to economy and the other note is that as the finance minister of this country, what all can go wrong when, when the economy is open for everyone. And at the end, I would like to ask you to write an another note by your own research, based on your own conclusions that gives a balance finding and an honest idea to every single citizen in this country about a policy that can go right or wrong and our citizens will not have to read newspapers or watch prime time radio stations 
kids have a balanced perspective and balanced opinion. And once we have got these two key skills of critical thinking and research, now let's bring something that is that's been always kept for royal families in the past, uh, which is the art of public speaking, the art of communication. I would request all of you to speak efficiently. I would request all of you to share your ideas and your thoughts, not only your greatest ideas, but also your greatest pains and your greatest insecurities. After bringing everyone to speak, now let us uh, uh, participate in turn for debates. Start turn for participating in turn for debates with your friends. Turn for debate is a great art of communication where you speak for the motion for some time and against the motion for some time. We have uh, seen many people in the past few decades uh, speaking for the motion for some time and against the motion for some, the other time. But speak for the motion for some time and against the motion for some time at the same time. And now I would like to uh, tell about the four key skills required which is leadership. A person who can think critically, research deeply and communicate effectively will, will not will necessarily not need to learn leadership because leadership is not taught by taught to them but it is taught to them and now i would like to tell about the two key skills two core values that are required for required for being a good leader which is uh, empathy and fearlessness be empathetic to everyone around you and coming to fearlessness after completion of your every class, stand up and tell your teacher that what uh, all you have understood and what you have not. Tell your teachers that what is going right and what is going wrong. Because if a person who is there enough to stand up and confront his or her teacher about what is going right and what is going wrong, will never be scared to stand up and confront to his very own Prime Minister that what is going right and what is not going right. And with this I would like to tell that we will truly build a nation where everyone would be seen as equal and we'll, we can all move forward as one person no matter where we live, how much we are, which religion or which family we were born in. Let's come together and be a great nation. I would like to conclude by saying that let us all come together and put I back in India.
we have uh, all act members right there are many uh, members who are in the vacancy we will come to you and uh, you can clarify if you have any doubts or you can talk uh, about your ideas with us we will give you some suggestions and uh, we will help you out if you have any doubts ok is that clear now we can start discussing and our team members will come to you yes you have time till 3 45 and after that, we'll begin with our culture. Yeah. 
delightful, beautiful performance. So, here I would love to share a few words about Arpita because she is a versatile artist and very good singer. And as you all already seen, she is a versatile dancer too. And she is an active volunteer of our Akansha Trust. So, all together, she is a gem for this trust. Due to some technical errors, Manjunath uh, EG will be performing later. I now call upon Kita Umesh to perform a semi-classical dance in front of you. And I now, I now request Hanya Prabhu and team to be ready for a good song. Sorry, it's a completely classical performance. I now welcome Kita Umesh. Duh.
points. So now I would like to call upon Manjunath Biji to perform him. I am sure that many of you know all these songs, 
So I request you please join us when we are singing. So it's all repeatable songs and you all can join us. So it's a humble request to all of you to join us. Just in practice smartly, na. You were very given one round practice smartly yesterday. So if there are any mistakes, please forgive.
show is at the beginning.
Good evening to all. My name is Pratam Shetty. I'm from Pompey College. So today I'm gonna sing uh, Zara Zara and Vasi Gara mashup. Yuhi Baras Baras Kali Ghata Barse Hum Yaar Bheeg Jaye Is Chahat Ki Barish Me Teri Khuli Khuli Lato Ko Sun मैं अपनी उंगलियों से मैं तो हूँ इस बारिश में सर्दी की रातों में हम सोए रहे एक चादर में हम दोनों तन्हार हैं ना कोई भी रहे इस घर में वसी गरा ये मंजी का उन्तुन मधिये
एक बार रह दीवानी झूठा ही सही प्यार तो कर मैं बुरा नहीं हंसी मुलाकाते बेचैन करके मुझको मुझसे यू ना फेर नजर रूठेगा ना मुझसे मेरे साथ मुझे बदले अपनी बाहों में है मेरी कसम तुझको सन दूर करना ये दूरी कहती है पास मेरी आजा रे आज रे आज रे
Hello everyone. Uh, myself Chirag, I'm from St. Aloysius University College. You all are the Kantara and the Kantara Chitra. So now I would like to sing a song from Kantara. So one please.
Good evening, guys. Yes. Now I am going to sing a song. Legendary Aspies. Bale bale chandu chandu ne hindu ne. Are you ready, guys? Yes. Bale bale chandu chandu ne hindu ne. भले Hello guys, I am Jitesh. Now I am going to rap a famous Kannada rap song, Nada Maya, done by Gubi. Okay, let's go. Na Parida, Na Parida, Na Parida, Na Parida, Na Parida, Pada Pada Kadu Ma. Oh, okay, come on, let's go. Na Parida, Pada Pada Kadu Ma. Oh, okay, come on, let's go. Na Parida, Pada Pada Kadu Ma. Oh, okay, come on, let's go. शिव सगड़ू स्पर्शा हड़ू तेरु ही ना है जिसा दरा दरा दुशा आहे मित्र ना कर नडी गनी के साहजा ना लगी दे ओह ना नो कुड़ा मानुषा है तेरी बाड़ बाड़ वो दूधी बगे नो समझन न क्या मन दे कर जिन्ही माँ के सर डंडी चल जा समझी कर ना साहाया के लोग तो बाकी लोग तीन बोरा मने हम पढ़ के डिलते Baby, I've been moving on. I don't think you should be something I don't want. Oh, but baby, you should know that my mama just likes you and she likes everyone. And I never liked you. I knew that I was wrong. I went so caught up in my job, didn't see what's going on. I never know. I've had a sleeping on my own Cause if you like the way you look that much Oh baby you should go and love yourself And if you think that I'm still holding it on to something You should go and love yourself Thank you! Thank you. 
जीवन पूर्ण चाट प्रेजेंट ऑफ ब्यूटीफुल कन्नड़ सॉन्ग भले भले चंद का चंदुली है नहीं गुड इवनिंग गाइस यस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू सिंग अ सॉन्ग भले भले चंद का चंदुली है नहीं यू पीपल गिव द सपोर्ट गिव यू
Arkansas. Uh, back to 2019, um, I had a dream to be a YouTuber, YouTube singer. So unfortunately, I could not go through that. And I had uh, recorded a song for that, but I could not upload it in the YouTube. But today, I am happy that I can present my song. Do you all agree with me? Yes! Okay, so the condition is you have to jump with me, you have to sing with me. Will you do that for me? Yes! Amazing! So yeah, let's begin.
okay okay ready for the question think can answer some might know the answer if you are too much into the social media okay 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 so the question is from number 1 to number 100 how many eights are there no 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 i wanted a mass answer i want a particular person to come here and answer from number 1 200 how many eights are there please come fast Your good name, please. My name is Sakhir. Sakhir, from number one to hundred, how many eights are there? One. One. Show my brother. Okay, he's saying one. So, what about what about eighteen, twenty-eight, thirty-eight, forty-eight, fifty-eight, sixty-eight, seventy-eight, eighty-eight, ninety-eight? Eight, not eight. No, I ask. I ask how many eight numbers are there? <laughs> so you guys don't agree with me. No. You guys don't agree with me. No. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for uh, this opportunity. Uh, Akansha Charitable Trust. I had a good time here.
ಐದು ಚೇರ್ ಇದೆ ಮುಂದೇನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನೋಡ್ತಾ ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ತದೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಐದು ವಿಭಿನ್ನವಾದ ಅಭಿನಯಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿ ತೋರಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಥರ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ತುಂಬ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ